I need, I have daddy issues. And I said, my father is very present in my life and I have strong role models. And she said, yeah, but it sounds like you have daddy issues because you want more. And I said, I think it's more of a role model. Uh, just wait until I get to his later videos where he thinks he's not traumatized or a victim, even though he lost his virginity at eight years old, allegedly. This man traumatized and everyone senses the offness in him. This is why I didn't like his content. I'm telling you right now, here's my prediction. I sensed an awkward in his content. I sensed a weirdness in his TikTok. I was sensing like a traumatized but won't admit it. And now that I'm moving into it, that's what I think Amaranth is sensing. Like if she's saying like, do you have a dad? And it might just be like, because you're giving off traumatized and we don't know what it is. So one of you on Discord asked me to look at this guy, Ciros, who I don't know who he is, except I know him from TikTok and I know him from a collab he did with FD Signifier. Liked the collab he did with FD Signifier. Kind of interesting, but I never really liked what I saw of him before. Not for any particular reason, though I'll tell you my reasoning and then I'll see now that we're deep diving into his content if my hunch was correct or not. This is Ciros. If you guys have seen him, he's kind of got a look to him. People usually know who he is because of his aesthetic, I think. You know, he's not the biggest content creator, but he's got something going on. He's got a vibe. He's got a brand. He's got a thing. The thing he's doing, I'm not sure about. I haven't found myself naturally drawn to his content because it feels a little bit, one, not my bubble, and two, it feels a little bit like vulnerability for clickbait and slash feels like an intensely traumatized person who claims he's not a trauma victim. And I always get like very confused about those circumstances, given that he's got some pretty crazy stories, allegedly, based off of his like videos. So let's watch it. Let's see if I'm, you know, maybe getting the wrong vibe from his branding, because again, I haven't deep dived into his content and I am very interested now we're gonna start off sort of in order with these four videos. And these four videos are, we're gonna watch them in order of when they were put out. One, to get a vibe of how he makes his content and two, to see if he changes tone as he progresses. So the first video I wanna start off with is a little bit of a drama video. He hashtags all his videos with drama commentary react, no problem. This is called, I'm at Amaranth and she's racist. All his videos are relatively short. And then we'll hop into the other ones just to give you a heads up on his titles. Okay. I ruined a polycule out of boredom. I lost my virginity at eight years old. And I was married to a 90-year-old lady when I was 18. Okay. So he's got some titles, which again is one of the reasons why, like, I don't know, his particular brand of clickbait. But it's not clickbait. I think these stories are true. So I, I, I it's not even clickbait necessarily. But let's jump into it. Let's watch it. And let's see if he's correct. Is Amaranth racist? Because that's a pretty large, that's a pretty big statement. Uh, I met Amaranth and she's racist. Let's start with this one. Okay. Yeah, we're about to go over my call with Amaranth. So I'm just going to start here just to give you guys a precursor to what happened here. So this is after the call. After we spoke. I just got kicked. The way he speaks makes me feel like he got high and then tried to overcompensate for being a ghetto previously like a ghetto gang member that was like her entire so now, now you're probably thinking to yourself how long did we speak we spoke for when did we start when did i get in this call right about here so like 15 14 ish minutes uh she me as soon as i got in there she kind of insulted me uh, i'll show you that part that's not 14. <sighs> She's blowing her nose. Uh, I, I comment, get Saros to God in there. And then she does this. Dragon Saros? Saros the God? You sound 14. So, um, immediately, we're starting off on uh, no good footing here. Uh, maybe it's because she's been speaking to the weirdos all day. I genuinely, I want to, I always give people the benefit of the doubt. She was speaking to weirdos all day. I want to know why he was in her lobby anyways. Is he a fan of Amaranth? I don't watch Amaranth. I'm not a hater of Amaranth either. I think she's like, I'm pretty neutral to her. I, I like that she's into business, but I don't know anything about her. I don't watch her. So I'm not a fan of Amaranth in that traditional sense. I would never think to go talk to her on live. So why is he doing that? Is he clout chasing? Uh, is he a fan? Like I said, is he just like excited to be there? Did she invite him? So that's what I'm trying to figure out now. I'm a little confused on why he's there in the first place. 
all day just psychopaths i was listening to her calls she does viewer calls like every day and these guys they come in and ask like horrible questions just the worst questions on the planet like um is your father still alive uh would you sleep with your father uh, would you sleep with your mother just weird questions it's very weird questions and i can understand how annoying and draining that gets i'm just one of thousands in the, the large scheme of things to be quite fair with you so let's continue hello that's out of 14. What's up, what? That's out of 14. <laughs> What's up, 14? Yeah, Good you evening. sound 14. So, beginning, we start off, and it's it's confrontational immediately. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I say greetings and salutations. That's kind of how I greet people. A greetings and salutations. Oh, he's obviously in, like, the nerd anime bubble. And he's definitely, like, I am assuming neurodivergent, and I do think he smokes, though I could be wrong on that. So you guys got to tell me if I'm wrong, because I don't know. But I think that's what I remember, maybe, about the few details I know about him. Like I said, I've only watched the him and FD Signifier talk, and I saw a couple of his TikToks, I think. But, like, this particular, uh, he's, like, a very particular brand of nerd that I think you either hate it or love it. I think I can see why somebody might be apprehensive I still don't know why Amaranth is like in a bad mood. Maybe because she's sick. Maybe because she has been talking to losers all day. But let's see. Salutations. And she she's doing like this fake therapy thing where she does like a, a therapy session, like her entire thing. So, and I asked. Um, oh wait, chat's correcting me. Uh, Cyril says he's never done any substance, so he's not a smoker. Okay, noted. I thought he was. Oh, was that just a line? Oh, when Amaranth said he sounded high, I thought it was because he was high. So she just said he sounded high. Okay, so he's sober. Okay, my bad. I thought, I don't know why I thought that meant he was high. Okay, so got it. I'm asking the question of how do you deal with boredom? Like genuine boredom because I've reached a plateau in my life where I, I, I'm kind of famous on TikTok. So I get a bunch of messages all day and I'm trying to differentiate how to find out who my friends are. That's kind of the main basis of the call. So let's get into it a little bit. Okay, yeah, he's definitely like kind of online online then. But do a large amount of fame on TikTok and other social medias. And a large amount of people in my closer friend groups have tried to get closer to me now. They're starting to reach out for collabs and I don't feel connected to these people at all. I don't feel as though I have a general connection with anyone in that zeitgeist. They feel, I feel like they're using me. You know why? Why is that? Because you use TikTok. It's because I use TikTok? Yep. That's so she's insulting the entire platform with TikTok, and I understand. I'm, I'm gonna post this on YouTube. I understand the hate for TikTok, but it's the world's biggest platform. Hating TikTok reminds me of when my parents hated Facebook, or when they hated IMVU, or when they hated MapleStory. It feels very boomery. Like you're using TikTok. That's a platform for you know children and kids. Grown people use TikTok. Grown people sell their products on TikTok. There's a TikTok shop. There's much. There's a lot about TikTok. Okay, this is like. <laughs> this is so funny that they're like it's just tiktok like i don't know this feels a little bit too like i like a little bit too much like a sense of justice kind of thing happening right now nobody cares like tiktok's great i love it i love tiktok i think it's great i don't know how to use it as a content creator i'll be real one day i might actually learn how to use it as a content creator but i do love it as a consumer and i am a youtuber i do this full time love youtube no youtube i know how to do youtube I love that he's famous on TikTok. Like, good for him. I'm glad he's, like, found his platform. But the fact that he's calling Amaranth out of all people to have a conversation about how to have authentic relationships with content creators, like, this is just so he can make a video. Let's be real. Why are you contacting a woman who's primarily a sex worker to ask her how to make authentic relationships on the internet when she's probably in the hardest position to know who her real friends are? <laughs> I mean, she's obviously figured it out. But she's figured it out because she's a former Twitch girl or she's a Twitch girl. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're on TikTok. TikTok isn't a community app like that. It's a drama app. So, like, of course, you don't know who your friends are. It's TikTok. That I didn't know you could do and you can make money off of TikTok. You can make more money off of TikTok than you can off YouTube for the most part. And it's easier to find an audience because mm. the discoverability on TikTok is much easier than it is on YouTube. Their algorithm is amazing. That's, that's, and to just discredit that is, is, is disgusting. And then she says something hyper contradictory going forward. 100%. But how old are you? I am 27. 
yeah, 27 years using TikToks must be really fucking disconnected feeling makes sense. Yeah, like she, I don't know what she's talking about. TikTok is definitely an all age app. Like definitely. I mean, I'm on like millennial TikTok. I'm like on, so I definitely don't know what she means in that regard. I'd like for her to, I hope he asks her, what do you mean by that? Didn't even, it just, it feels condescending the way she's speaking. Am I confused about Amaranth's relationship with her audience? You know what I mean? Am I confused by that? I know Amaranth was on kick for a year because she had a contract with them. I don't know if she's back on Twitch, but you know what I mean? I'm not sure what's happening here, but I, I'm i not sure if she's just sick so she doesn't care. Because remember, like he's just like another guy calling into her show. So she's probably thinking, like, who the fuck is this guy? But he sounds like a little butthurt over it, which is sort of funny to me because he's obviously just calling her for clout anyways. Like, why are you calling Amaranth about this conversation? She's still on kick? Okay, if she's still on kick, then she's definitely dealing with a bunch of dudes who are probably just, like, pissing her off. But also, like, I'm not saying it justifies her mood. I'm just saying, like, I'm explaining why that would be the way it is. Right? You know me? I'm not sure why that is, because we just started talking. I've done nothing yet. I've done genuinely nothing yet. No, it's not even in that capacity. It's the capacity of... This. Just a reminder, like, she doesn't know who you are. Like, you're not you. You're just a username. That's... You're not a you, right? Now become my livelihood. At the current moment, I think I stand to make 6000 a month just by using TikTok and things of that variety. And now I quit my job, and it's become my livelihood. And people have reached out to me, companies and sponsors, and it's hard navigating. See, like, what is he doing? Is he, like, bragging? What is he, like, nerd? Is he nerd divergently and not understanding the social situation? I've been there. I've done that. I am so nerd divergently awkward sometimes. I go back and think, oh, my God, why did I say that on the Internet? I think he's being a little just, like, socially awkward here, but he doesn't realize it. Like, you are bragging unknowingly. Like, she doesn't know what you're doing. So this random username, in my opinion, I don't know. I I don't I'm indifferent to both of them. I don't watch either of them. But like guy comes into your chat to start talking about how he's famous on TikTok. He's trying to figure out who his real friends are. You're 27. Like, why are you calling Amrath? Like, I don't understand if that's why I think he's um neurodivergent, because like he or he's socially awkward because he doesn't know how weird it sounds from her perspective, just hearing a voice. Right? And so it just feels like really strange, I think. Navigating this new landscape and everyone is seemingly becoming boring. Um, that's scary that you just quit. What was your other job that you quit? I worked at Amazon. I worked in the warehouse. Oh, okay. Well, then you're not losing much, I guess. No, not at all. It was, okay, it was only 30 an hour. Yeah. Um, I would just, if I were you though, I would, um look for like a, a better job like a normie job too this, this is what this is what agitates me a little bit the the idea of not following your dreams the the <laughs> listen i am I'm, I'm also a luffy fan I, I he's i'm telling you he's autistic or something like he's got a thing he's got a thing going on it's like oh you should you should just keep a regular job as well i always go and that's that's genuinely okay advice no uh, i'm sorry he just kind of reminds me of mr girl anyone else rip keep a normal job and do your content you know you don't want to lose your normal job that's generally good advice but generally speaking i always go full in i always do and that's genuinely solid advice to give somebody right hey listen you don't want to quit your regular job to go all in on this content creation thing because it doesn't always work fair very fair analysis very fair assessment no issues there but her entire livelihood is this she's very lucky to be in a position she's in she understands that i'm glad she understands that but like i want to do this this is what i want and i'm not unopen to advice but the way she gives it is very just condescending in a sense it feels condescending it may be just me and it may just be on some ego trip and that's fair that's fine but it just feels condescending the way she gave it because at 27 you're quickly going to become not relatable to the tiktok audience that's stupid that's a very dumb thing to say that's just dumb well i don't know why you went to a non-tiktoker to ask for advice if you're 
It's like he hopped into her bubble where she doesn't know anything about TikTok and then asked her about TikTok. She doesn't know anything about TikTok. You're only mad at her because you jumped into her bubble. Like, why are you asking her? She doesn't know anything about TikTok. You should go ask a TikToker. Like, that's what's so funny is this is so awkward. Okay, again, I didn't like his TikToks. That's why I never got into his content personally. And like I said, I always felt like his videos were clickbait for views, like vulnerability for views. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. I know this is a real person on the planet and I don't know him, but I was wondering why his vibes were giving me like, I was getting weird vibes from him, but I wasn't sure what it was. I think it's just a difference of bubbles and like not seeing each other. I think he's like missing some social cues and he's blaming other people for it. And I think maybe he should just be aware of that. But yeah, like why'd you go to a non-TikToker and then get mad at her for not knowing TikTok? Chat says he's looking for a particular answer with her and he's mad she has a different take. I think so too, which is like so interesting. But maybe he learned, maybe by the end of this video. But then remember the title of this video is I met Amaranth and she's racist. First of all, you didn't meet Amaranth. You talked to her on a thing where I'm assuming she can't even see your face and she's just listening to your voice. So you didn't meet Amaranth. You talked to her. And second of all, maybe she is racist. We haven't gotten to that part yet. So let's get there. That is just a dumb thing. She doesn't know my content. She doesn't know what I do. Has no idea if it's because e what I do is just stories. I just tell stories on TikTok. It doesn't matter about the relatability of the story. It's just stories. They like my stories. <laughs> they like the way I speak. That's simply it. And TikTok itself is unstable. As if Kick, Twitch, and YouTube are any more stable than TikTok. Of a, as, as a career. I also get re well. I also get revenues from many other different things. I edit for YouTubers, and that's been kind of my side grind. I can't talk about the YouTubers I edit for as an NDA. They are egotistical, oh. though. I want to point that out. I'm not going to give their names, but they are horribly egotistical. And it seems as though whenever I get to a plateau of anybody that's like in the million range, like that are millionaires, they get to this ego point, this high ego trip where they don't listen to anything. This high ego trip where they feel like, oh, well, you're worthless and I'm better than you. And it, that's what it felt like speaking to Amrath. And I picked up on that immediately. It felt strange. And that has now turned to my main grind. I, I, I bring in, I'm able to pay my rent yearly with just two editing of videos and it's a drastic gotcha. change in life now. It's, it's, it's terrifying because my rent every year would be $7,500 because my wife pays half and I pay half. So that's what I'm able to do with, if I, if I edit for two YouTubers who are a million subscribers and I do all the editing myself, then I can pretty much pay rent for a year because they pay good. When I speak to people, they bore me. Um, interesting. I don't think of finances that way. I don't think my wife pays half the rent and I pay half the rent. Cause like, what if your wife can't pay half the rent because she gets sick? So he's like bragging, but not bragging. I don't think he is malicious. I think he's socially awkward. I'm going to say that he's probably not malicious, but he is miss. He does not know his place. Something like that. Like he doesn't know. Yeah, find a new bubble, bro. Yeah, he doesn't know his place in the bubble. So he's he's trying to be like, I'm part of the big boy league a little bit, but then I don't want to be a little bit. Okay. I know. We'll see. Let's we're judging. We're judging, but let's see. And it's not because they work normal jobs. It's not because they, they go through normal people issues. It is a sense of disconnect in not only the way their lives are situated, they have nothing. They have no goals or aspirations. They have nothing to be of interest. Nothing is satisfying. And it's terrifying to me. How, yeah. do, you, how do you deal with that? Um, I see the way, way I deal with it is I don't go and talk to just everybody, right? I have like a specific interest, like horses. And so then I talk to people at the barn who mm -hmm. also are boarding horses there. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like pre-selects, right? Because it takes someone who's like more interesting, who's going to have things in common with you. Very good, Amaranth. I don't just socialize in general. I think I really believe in going and pursuing hobbies and connecting with the people who like the same thing Agree. you. Okay, Agree. So during the call, it's a long call. I don't want to bore you guys with the entirety of the call. I talked about how I had hobbies, how I talked to those people, and it still bored me. And she just. Yeah, I agree. Who, who was it? Kay? Who said it? 
Kay says, when I speak to people and they bore me and when I speak to people and they quote bore me, in my opinion, that sounds egotistical. Sounds like he's talking down to people when he accuses rich people of doing. Okay, a few things are happening. He's either autistic and he's trying to explain something that's honest without being condescending. I am bored and these people are boring to me, but or, you know, that could be a fact like he is unentertained. He's not feeling connected. He is not feeling seen or he's just a fucking asshole and really high in his ego. And he's like, everybody bores me. I'm so interesting. Everybody else is boring. I did watch this conversation with FD Signifier and it did feel very awkward. Like I love FD, but he felt a little bit like a kid who just thinks he's like a little bit too big for his britches a bit. So yeah, his he's either innocently stating like a fact, like I am bored. Which, by the way, I think if you're bored, you're a boring person. Like, I'm sorry, life is too fucking interesting for you to be bored. And if you're bored, you don't have real hobbies. There are not enough time to do hobbies. Okay? Everyone out here complaining they don't have enough time to do hobbies and you have the goddamn time to be bored? Ma'am, that is a you problem. That is a you problem, ma'am. Okay? All of us wish we had 10 more hours in the day to do our hobbies. Well, you sit in here complaining. Ma'am, that's a you problem. And then for him to sound like... Oh, it's everyone else. So you're married. You have a best friend. Go hang out with her. You're literally married. You're married and you're still bored. <laughs> R.I.P. to his relationship with his wife. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Could you imagine if I said my wife bore? I'm bored and I'm married. Rip to his wife, bro. Just said, I need, I have daddy issues. And I said, my father is very present in my life and I have strong role models. And she said, yeah, but it sounds like you have daddy issues because you want more. And I said, I think it's more of a role model. Uh, just wait until I get to his later videos where he thinks he's not traumatized or a victim, even though he lost his virginity at eight years old, allegedly. This man traumatized and everyone senses the offness in him. This is why I didn't like his content. I'm telling you right now, here's my prediction. I sensed an awkward in his content. I sensed a weirdness in his TikTok. I was sensing like a traumatized but won't admit it. And now that I'm moving into it, that's what I think Amaranth is sensing. Like if she's saying like, do you have a dad? And it might just be like, because you're giving off traumatized and we don't know what it is, right? But if he doesn't see himself as a victim and doesn't see himself as traumatized, that's why I'm like very, that's why I'm saying, like, okay, we'll get into it. Okay, we'll get into it. Oh. Chat says he has a video talking about how he's a narcissist. <gasps> oh, well. That could make sense, though. Like a NPD, like diagnosed narcissist, or just like high on the narcissistic scale. I mean, I could see that. Yeah, I could see it. Let's see. Uh, I think he's ner divergently bored. I'll have similar thoughts sometimes where I'll feel bored and I'll say that to people, but I make it clear it's not about them, but I'm lacking stimulation. It's a specific tone. Maybe. He could actually just be like, I'm not getting the dopamine that I need. You know, maybe maybe he's ADHD and he's not getting the right dopamine or something. I don't issue than a, a daddy issue thing. She said, nah, you just want you just want somebody to be your dad or something like that. Then I explained my background. I explained how I lived in an Amish village, how I had a 90 year old wife, how when I was when I was 12 to 18, I'm 27 now. I was, you know, a crip. I was like, I was like, I was a gangbang, and that's what I did. And I think she took that one piece for the begin when the beginning when I talked about what she said at the end. I think she took that one piece and kind of roll with it. The entirety of the call, we're just talking. I was an idiot. I'm a child. Nineteen. I ended up having another situation where somebody, out of the goodness of their heart. Yeah, and I, I talk about all that stuff, right? And she says the way I speak is inauthentic. As if my vernacular is disingenuous somehow. I don't understand what she means by that. Mm, see, we're all, yeah, we're all sensing the same thing. But I'm trying to be very um, open-minded to his own brain. Like, how does his brain work? Because look, he might see this video and feel like here's another person who's saying that there's something about the way that I talk. And look, I get criticism similar. So I'm going to assume he's not malicious. But I'm going to say there's something where he hasn't really like been that he hasn't been introspective enough with himself yet. He doesn't have a good enough relationship with himself yet. So there's something like that happening. And I do think he's trying to have like a real conversation with Amaranth. Like I think he approached her wanting to have a deep conversation. And I think she's like weirded out by that. And I think he's not understanding that. Like who said it? Kay says, Amaranth isn't a therapist. Why was he expecting her to have a good take on anything? That's like me going to a butcher to ask him to fix my computer. 
I think that he is doing that neurodivergent, trying to make intimacy with people who can't see him thing. You know, I do. I th- I think there's something here where his brain is like, I am trying to make contact. See me, see me, see me, see me. And Amaranth's like, why are you like being weird? And he's like, I'm not being weird. You're being weird. You know, something like that. I genuinely don't. I wish I did. I genuinely wish I understood what she was talking about. She and, and then after the call, she just immediately insults me. And then later in the stream, she insults me again. And then I get a bunch of messages from a bunch of weird old guys talking about, hey, get out the call. You're ruining it for our queen. You're a horrible person. You should <laughs> you should end your life. And I'm like, I Whoa, think I understand the kind of audience that Amref attracts. And it messes me up a little bit, right? It messes me up because... Also, I'm just going to say this out loud. Though his hair is signature, the color scheme is just wrong. It looks like you forgot to go to the hair salon. I said what I said. It's not the fro. That's fine. It's the coloring. Like it makes, it looks like you missed your appointment at the salon, which is also another reason why I didn't watch him because he signals, he signals like he's trying hard to stand out, but he doesn't know how to do his own hair. And I don't like that. Like, I just feel like the colors make no sense. They're not vibrant enough. They're just kind of like, you make enough money a month, go to the salon. So that's another reason. And not to be like, so ju- I'm not judging to condemn. I'm just judging to say like, the combination of aura is signaling I don't take care of myself. I think he's neurodivergent though. He's so misunderstanding Amaranth in this moment that he's having like a, <laughs> yes, Yes, he looks like a rooster, a very cute rooster because I like roosters and he's cute enough, but his hair just gives like, it's just giving, it's giving something not good. It's not giving, I guess I should say, but yeah, he's off. But anyways, I think, I don't think he's, um, I think he's neurodivergent and narcissism, by the way, is a form of neurodivergency. So if he's NPD, uh, he could be like a form of neurodivergency, right? Personality disorders are a form of neurodivergency. It's giving depression. Yeah, I think so. I think it's giving a bit of depression. You know? Yeah. I don't know what kind of people she's getting in her streams. I don't know. I don't have this this big thing explaining how the people operate in her streams. But it seems to be people that are lonely and desperate and want interaction from a woman. So- Sir, why are you calling Amaranth? You are giving off lonely and desperate and calling it to Amaranth. That's the disconnect. He is giving lonely, desperate. You have a wife. Can you imagine calling Amaranth out of all people to be like, I'm bored and lonely. You have a wife. You have a wife. You have a wife. You have a wife. (laughs) You're literally married. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, okay. So, so intrinsically and she has to be condescending and she has to be snarky and she has to be mean she has to do these things and it feels horrible i don't like it and it makes me dislike her as a person but this isn't her true character i think i think this is some persona she's putting on and it's not me trying to cope like oh she's a good person no no i think if you have to put on a persona online to be more authentic when being online is your entire job especially when you're doing it for 10 hours a day you lose that part of yourself that is you you lose a big part and core of what the, the character is and what the fake is and what the real is like the, the like the aspect of what you are it, it because i could i could be on youtube all day and just pulling this character hey guys what's going on everybody how are you doing i could do that but i don't do that i don't uh, what you see on youtube is he's doing that neurodivergent thing where he's like i'm more authentic than other people which i totally understand so yeah he's doing that thing which i get i couldn't do that either hey guys welcome to youtube oh my god so it's yeah totally but yeah he's got that thing that he's he's doing kind of how i am in real life what you see on tiktok is how i am in real life the way i speak the way i go about things. i just think it's autism i i do something neurodivergent like that i don't think it's actually mpd right like but i don't know i'm not a therapist but it could just be like neurodivergency. He's got those he's got those autism monotone eyes. He's got the monotone thing going on. I don't know. Hmm. We'll watch it wait until we get into his other videos, bros. Things, the way I operate, if there's no disconnect. There's no you're gonna meet a different person if you meet me in real life. And I think that's a big issue with people online where they put on a character for so long that they don't know the difference between two separate people. And it's it's weird. It's weird and gross, and I don't like it. 
and the entire time when she condescends and then she says something like i don't consider it like horrifically racist but it felt slightly racist when she called me a ghetto that felt like such a disconnect like somebody that sure. had reached the one percent of america and said eh you're just a ghetto you're nothing it felt disgusting to hear it felt like a discredit of everything i've been in my life everything i've done and gone through like i, I, I got high and spoke like i don't smoke i don't drink okay I never have and i never will so he lost his virginity at eight years old was amish was also a crypt but never did drugs. That's a pretty wild story. Ah, uh, depressionize. Is it depressionize or neurodivergentize? Maybe he's just depressed. Valid. And I even stated that I'm completely straight edge and sober. I never drank or mm. smoked. Because it's taken away nothing from our conversation. And I'm nobody. I am a genuine nobody. I'm nobody. I'm some random dude on the internet with less than 5,000 subscribers. I have nothing. I have genuinely nothing, right? But it feels disgusting. He is 37,000 now. He is a small content creator on YouTube, but on TikTok, apparently, he's pretty popular. I knew the moment I saw his TikToks why I didn't like him. I was kind of surprised FD Signifier talked to him, but not really, because FD is such a dad. He, like, reaches out to so many people. But are you ready for this? So here's his TikTok. He has 400,000 followers on TikTok. I mean, hardly famous on TikTok. It feels disgusting to know that at the peak, you turn into whatever, whatever she is. Yeah, interesting. He's got a weird thing going on with his brain. His brain processes information interestingly, but it's it's not introspective. He's not very so he's not giving introspective. He's giving traumatized so far. At the peak of everything, you turn into this creature that's not even a human anymore. Just somebody that just okay. Lay off amaranth, bro. Lay off amaranth. You're going okay. I'm gonna lay off. That does things just to do things. Where she stated. Oh, I don't want to do OnlyFans anymore. I can finally do what I'm passionate about and still does OnlyFans stuff. And I'm not dis. Okay, even Ludwig was like, I don't want to do YouTube, but I'm still going to do YouTube. Yeah. Get over it. Like, he just wants to be the person who's like, I do whatever I want, no matter what. He just sounds like a uh, kind of spoiled. Like, he sounds silly. He sounds like a kid. He just sounds like a kid crediting people that do OnlyFans. No, I'm not doing that. I'm never going to do that. That's not me as a human. However, if you state adamantly that, oh, I don't want to be a McDonald's employee. I want to work as an electrician. And you don't pick up the trade to become an electrician, even if you have the money of being an electrician, even if you have the freedom and financial freedom to do that, and you still choose to be a McDonald's employee, then maybe you really like being a McDonald's employee. Maybe you enjoy that. Maybe that's the reality of the situation. Oh, my ex abused me into this. And I thought, because I never watched Amaranth before this. As a matter of fact, so why did you bother her and go on her video? I knew it. I knew he wasn't a fan. He's just using her for clout. Yeah, he's doing the I'm the most authentic YouTuber. I'm the realist. You're just probably neurodivergent. Need to go get it like a pill. You need to go to therapy or something, obviously. So, OK, it's giving very much like I'm a nobody, but also I don't know. It just like it's confusing, but I don't think it's inauthentic. I think it's confused. I don't think he's being inauthentic. I think he's literally confused and doesn't know what the plot of the story is, right? Now, just a reminder that Amaranth also runs a business and has employees. Ludwig said to Dr. K, he would love to quit YouTube, but he has employees and too many people who rely on him. And honestly, if you're at the height of that much success, it feels very silly for Amaranth or Ludwig, regardless of how much they don't like going to work, to throw it slash away. Yeah, like sometimes content creation just turns into another job. And that's how it is. I, I don't watch Amareth, period. I don't. I just wanted to speak to somebody who was, you know, I tried, I tried to clout chase. That's what I tried to do. I'm not going to lie to anybody. Oh, well, okay. Anybody? And I spoke to her. And I understood one thing. She'll do anything for money. She's just doing this because she likes the public attention. That's all she's doing it for. It's disgusting. It's weird. And it's stupid. Oh, my boy needs therapy so bad, bro. And I did the same thing. I, li I like public attention, too. I agree. I, 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 I 100%. If I was at her plateauing standpoint, I'm not sure if I would be any different. I don't know. But man, does it feel gross. Man, does it feel gross. Okay, weird fucking video, bro. Let's look at the comments real fast. Dude, you're real and she's not. That's why it bothers her. You're sp 
You're speaking about uh, people that bore you and I can guarantee you she's seeing herself in the people you're bored by. That's why she's taking offense. Oh my God. That's crazy. She acts like she's seeing, uh, that's seeing she's making more money from simps that are thirsty. People confuse the disinterest and detachment with cool. She may be subconsciously disengaging from a job she no longer enjoys. The fact she's wiping off her sweat kind of shows she don't give a fuck about this whole call with a fan thing. Not going to lie. My eyes rolled in the back of my head when she said her horses were, her hobby was horses. I mean, it literally is. She like literally has horses and they're very expensive. She's a big animal girl. She's adopted like so many animals. Yeah, this guy is like, ugh. I think your ego got triggered for sure. Okay. This is just horrible. She acts so entitled and brainwashed. Yeah. Ew. Okay, gross. What a great start though. He's in a little bit of drama. It says there's a girl starting a smear campaign and making up fake screenshots about me and people are agreeing with her because I'm genuinely a weird guy. This was posted, uh, it says 725, so last month. No one has to forgive me ever, but I do need to get better and I am. He said, uh, one dude said, yeah, he gets drunk a lot and smokes weed. I'm so confused because I've never literally drank or smoked weed in my life. And he says he remembers drinking with me and so much other nonsense. Um, but golly, motherfuckers gonna heal without slanderous lies. In my past, I was sociopathic and narcissistic and I was a horrible human and I've been to therapy to grow to change, to become a better, to become better so that my behavior was corrected. And just because... I am now getting clout. People want to try and tear me down. That is insanely childish. I just want to be left alone, man. I vibe with my lover and make stupid internet videos. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Isn't, is there another part of this or is that it? Is that the whole thing? Yeah, I guess that's the whole thing. And his, this part of his, um, <clears throat> in the, in the, you know, the section where he can post like a, I don't know what this is called. I'm blanking on words right now. He said, in my past, I was a horrible person. I was a gang member, narcissist, and a sociopath in my teen years, and I ruined lives. And up until 22, 23, I had to change in my life to not be a vile human I was. Oh, this man needs so much therapy. He said, I am not the good guy. I am not the victim. I was an abuser. I was the person that told people, yeah, do blank illicit substance or anything for fun. I just want to grow and apologize to anyone I've ever hurt. What is better to be born good? Or through extreme effort, combine, combat an evil nature within you. Hashtag narcissist growth mental health for you. Bro. And the music sound he put to this post was disturbing suspense psychological thriller music. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's just kind of crazy. I don't know if he's weird. I think he might just be kind of mentally unwell. Which is fair to some extent. But let's keep going because... Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Okay, so that's his TikTok. Let's go to this next video in order again. This is a month ago. I ruined a polycule out of boredom. Okay, already sounds like a horrible person. Let's see. I was chilling at a coffee shop about to dine and dash and not pay for my bill when a person approached me, looking down at me, sizing me up as if they're about to fight me, but in the bedroom. And then I look at them and say, may I help you? And they looked at me and said, I can help you. They sat down next to me, spoke sweet nothings to me saying, we're very interested in you. I'm thinking I'm about to get recruited for the army. Maybe if you get talked into the Matrix Initiative, something of that variety. Maybe I'm about to join the Marine Corps. I don't know what's about to happen. And then they say, would you like to join our polycule? Now, I'd never heard this word before. I knew polytheism. I assumed these were Greek God words. Heard this term my entire life. This was news to me. And I said, sure. I didn't admit. Then the person looked at me and said, well, my pronouns are they, them. And I said, okay, you two people? I didn't know what was going on. I want to point out that I was very ignorant back in the day. I didn't know much about the LG, BL, BLT. Didn't really know much about anything like that. I, I didn't know. And they said, well, is he like a comedian or is he telling us a story? Because like, obviously, even if it happened this way, that person's crazy and you shouldn't talk to them. What normal, sane, rational, healthy person walks up to a random person and is just like, oh, um, you know, join our polycule. I don't know. It sounds like that. You remember that Christian guy that was like, do you want to join us for the end of the world? You see how they're crazy? You see how they're crazy? You say no, and you walk away. 
no, I'm, I just identify as non-binary. And I was confused because I didn't know I was speaking to a reverse computer. Binary was often associated with computer code. I was a little bit perplexed. Everything they were telling me was news to me. I was interested because I didn't know what was going on. I was curious. My curiosity got the better of me. Then a woman, about 6'3", approaches. And the person, non-binary person, they say, this is my partner. Their pronouns are she, her. I look up at this mountain of an Amazon. Yeah, I think he's just telling stories um to get famous like i just don't believe these stories they could be real right but it could just be like he's being like an artist you know how many people on tiktok are always like this is a real story and they're doing it for art but it's like not a real story and then it comes out and it's so funny and i say i am wholly invested in whatever you're selling me I will buy a hundred copies of whatever it is. I don't know what's going on. I have no clue. I'm thinking they're gonna pull out a book, something of that variety. I don't know what's happening. And then the large woman sits down and explains what a polycule is to me, where they have multiple partners all living under the same roof. And I thought to myself, my rent is gonna be cheaper. I was so excited. I was thinking about how much money I could save. I could probably start investing in the stocks. Uh, Millennial Classics, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I could probably buy some cryptocurrencies. I was super excited. I was like, man, this is amazing. Now, the only issue was that I already had a studio apartment of my own. They said, don't worry about that. We'll pay off the rest of your lease if you want to move in with us. Now, I want to point this out. This is the very first conversation I'm having with these people. They know nothing of me. They know nothing of my politics. They know nothing of my gang history. They don't even know if I got felonies. They know nothing of what I am or who I am as a person. This was amazing. They didn't judge. They just thought I looked cool. And they wanted me to be a part of it. And I said, maybe, and I was responsible at this moment, maybe we should go on a date first. And they said, well, let's go on a date right now. So they invited you into their polycule, but you were the mature one who said, we'll have to go on a date first. Okay, let's see. Uh, it will never not be funny to me that it, all it took to destroy this polycule is one person. Okay, hold on. I don't want to spoiler on the story. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So we talked about our interest and love of things. By the way, he just tells stories for a living on TikTok and on YouTube. So I don't know if he's actually trying to be comedic. It's just the way that he's, he's doing the aesthetic implies... Um, a storytelling of somebody on stage who's trying to be funny, I think. But that's because he's not looking at us like we are not the audience, which is what I'm confused about. He's not looking at us. He's not acknowledging us. He's not talking to us. He's like talking to somebody else. And I can't figure out who is he talking to. So I don't know if he's trying to be funny, by the way. I don't know if his stories are meant to be funny. But this is let's see, because we're going to we're going to watch him tell his other stories, too. So we'll find out. They talked about Rave Master and Mayor and Cubics. And other shows that I'd never saw before. It was amazing. And I told them about my gang life and street violence and history within the, the gangs. And they were super excited and entranced by everything I said because they loved my vernacular. It was so fun. And they had decided at that exact moment that they made the right decision to bring me into the polycule. And so I was a part of the polycule. It was fun. I took off all the things from my studio apartment, my... PS2, my PS3, my PS4, my Xboxes, my Nintendo Switches. You know what's weird, though? He does have a thing. He has a thing that has garnered him an audience. I mean, he does have an audience on TikTok. He's building an audience on YouTube. He he has a thing that makes people obviously find him interesting. So there's no fault in that. He obviously has a thing. But I can't tell if people are watching because they think his stories are real, because he's entertaining, because he feels relatable, or because they're watching a car crash and all that jazz I took everything and brought it along with me I took three things of yogurt out of my fridge because I was going to eat from their fridge it was super fun and I had two rats that I was taking care of in the cage I brought them with me I was super excited to do all these things and I arrive at this uh chat says I can't I just can't figure out what the thing he got is I think it's weird he stands out he's distinct so but he's like kind of weird in a weird way where it's like what are you doing like what's your thing he's obviously artistic so anytime you have like the artist aesthetic it's like a, it, it works with weird right so then the weird plus artistic makes people wonder if there's something bigger happening or if they're coming across somebody who's going to be amazing one day like what's the difference from him and cj the x x the cj whatever his that person's name is the they them 
like they're very artistic. They talk very fast. Like a lot of people are like they're too much for me personally, but you can see why they're popular. And when people see that, they're like, oh, is there something weird happening here? Is there something artistic? And so I think, you know, yeah, OK, Visa says I was thinking about CJ, too. So for for the CJ people, there's going to be a crowd for this guy. It's not me. And CJ's, I can see, well, CJ is very talented. Like CJ has like a thing going on, but they're in their own bubble. And I don't watch CJ's videos unless I'm watching it with you guys. So it's not, I'm not the audience. And this guy, um, Ciros, he's not my, he's not my cup of tea, but he's going to be somebody's. I think he's going to do fine in the same way he's doing fine on TikTok. I think he'll have a place here on YouTube for sure. Illustrious, historic house, six bedrooms, 3.5 bathrooms, rent was 2,500, but separated amongst a variety of people. Hold on, uh, Chad says this is definitely interesting. I've never heard a person that was once in a gang affiliated speak about the experience in such a flippant manner. It's really odd. Here's my theory. My theory is this guy grew up really fucked up, has a lot of trauma, and was always in the wrong bubble and never fully assimilated. I'm going to guess he was never fully assimilated into the crypt bubble, never fully assimilated into the Amish nub bubble, never fully assimilated into his marriage with a 90 year old, never fully assimilated into his life. I'm going to assume this guy's actually a middle person, but he's still very unhealthy and needs like a lot of work done. So as a person who like is a middle person herself and is never fit quite into any of my bubbles, it always felt like I was always never enough in the bubble. Like I was never like for him, he'd be like never in the gang enough. Cause you're right. Like I've, I, if I know anything about the gang bubble, he definitely doesn't give me, I was really in the gang vibes. He gives me, I was someone's little bro in the gang vibes a little bit. You know what I mean? Sorry, Crip, not Crypt, Crip. Anyways, the point is, is that he gives me that energy, but I'm not sure. Like he, I feel like he was somebody's little bro maybe in it. But I don't know. I don't know the bubble well enough. But it feels like, yeah, he f feels like he was never fully in any of the bubbles. But we'll see. I didn't know the other partners, but they didn't know me either. So it was on equal playing fields. I then proceeded to meet them. We had a femboy. We had they them, non-binary person. We had a tall Amazonian woman. We had another person who was dark and brooding. We had a giga chad kind of guy, super buff, very hairy. The mm. variety of people. It's kind of like going into the circus. And I love the circus. I just need some peanuts. It was amazing. I didn't know how bedroom activities were gonna work, but I got my own room. And all I had to do was pay 450 a month in rent. Plus my share of the utilities, this was heaven. You know what he's doing? He's sensationalizing his life for views, which is something I don't love, but it does make money here on YouTube. You remember how he was criticizing Amaranth for being like fake for views? And he's like, I'm authentic. Um, but you're talking like an inauthentic person, like the way you're doing your work feels like you're sensationalizing your life. Like I lived a pretty crazy 20s, but it just felt like my life. I could sensationalize it for views, but it's just like, I don't know, like he's trying to make it a bigger deal. And like the background, the like aesthetic, it's like, uh, I don't know. To me, this was something I needed in my life. And I stayed there for two months before things got bad. I established dominance immediately. I hooked up my PlayStation in the living room. <laughs> I made sure everybody was playing games with me. I learned all their names. I learned everything about these people. I learned every aspect of their day-to-day -day life. I learned their favorite coffee order, highlight their toast, what preference of pancake over waffle they had. I learned everything about these people, how they like their beard brushed. Do they like their butt hairs played with? I all right, sir, slow down there. Yeah, uh, he is young and young storytellers aren't honest yet. They don't realize being honest and authentic means you can't always tell the truth, but have to be honest. Yeah, I think that's true. Like, I think he's 27, so he's a little young, but I think, yeah, he's not quite, he's not quite figured out his voice or how he wants to do things. He's like experimenting, but I think he's not, like, he doesn't seem very adult to me. He seems very much like he's missing something. And I don't know what it is, you know, like <laughs> Chad says, like Britt says, it's giving big bro is big dog. Yeah, big bro is is a big dog. He's giving like, he's just very giving like, yeah, I've done some stuff, you know, I've lived a life. Like, I don't know. He just seems like a kid to me. Learned if they enjoy 
become a linguist, I learned everything. And then a divide happened in the household. What divide with this? What, what could possibly happen? I noticed the dishes were not getting done. The rest of the house was pretty clean besides their rooms because they never left their rooms for some reason. And we had all primarily been freaky with each other at one point or another. We were all kind of in, intertwined, interlinked. Condoms were used furiously through the house. Afterwards, I go to the dishes and I clean all the dishes. And it was a lot. Hmm. And I did this four times and I realized these dishes piled up too fast. So I organized the house meeting. I looked them all in the eyes and I said to them, My friends, I must tell you something very important. I need you all to have one plate, one spoon, one fork, one knife, and one bowl. That's all you get. And you are responsible for that. And that is it. You'll make dishes a lot easier for me. And they said, okay. That didn't happen immediately. It didn't. They were very adverse to the idea of having good dish repertoire. However, I tossed out all the rest of the other dishes. Every single one of them, besides pots and pans, of course. I tossed them all out. So that when you use the dish... <sighs> this is like a fake story, right? You had to wash it. That was important. I mean, I've met freaks like this. I've met a person like this. But they were a freak. Like, it's crazy. These are the most, like, trashy people that I could think of who would do something like that. And they all respected me for that. Doubt As a it. matter of fact, when I established boundaries and established dominance, they all became obsessed with me. Interesting. Chess says, despite playing the weird guy, he's always the reasonable one in his stories. Yeah, I have a feeling he's like, that's what I'm saying. I'm listening to Julia Fox's memoir, and she's the way she talks about herself, I think it's a celebrity thing. I do. I think it's people who seek celebrityism. They're always like the, you know, I was 15, but everybody wanted to fuck me, even her dad. It's like, okay, relax. It's like uh, they're always the the main character in a way that's like really silly. You know, it feels really silly, like trauma, but it's trauma. It's genuinely trauma. It's like, I'm cool because all the old people want to fuck me. And it's like, ugh, go to therapy, you know? And he's giving off the same vibes. Can't wait to listen to the story where he lost his virginity at eight years old. We'll get to that next. Me. They all broke down their little minutia groups they had where one was bigger than the other one. And they all wanted me. They all began to dislike each other somehow. I don't even know how that happened. And I didn't know what to do with all this newfound energy. I didn't know what to do. So, I began to turn everybody against each other. Start making up rumors. I got bored. I like drama. Drama is intrinsic to my human condition. Hmm. I was really bored. I'm not a good person. Don't assume I am. And I made them all hate each other. And slowly but surely, they all left. You know why? Okay, also, do you just guys, you remember, you know how Sneeko's neurodivergent? He's ADHD. And you know how they try to be like 10 different people? You know, Sneeko tried to stand up com co comedy, right? It's on YouTube. It's hilarious. Bad. It's hilarious. Bad. It's bad. But he tried to be a stand up comic. Even I thought about being a stand up comic at one point in my life. It's so neurodivergent, like ADHD. I can do 100 things. This is what this guy feels like. He feels like Sneeko and he's trying to figure out who he is. But all they know is they love themselves a lot. And it's getting in the way. Like, they are just so into themselves in a way that is so funny. And so they can't, like, they don't feel real. Like, Sneeko always feels like he's playing a character to me. And this guy feels like he's playing a character. It's like, okay, but which one is the real you? You know? It's kind of funny. The house that they had actually bought. It was a rent-to-own property. And they actually owned the house. It was really nice. And I thought that somehow I could get the house if I got of the house obviously as i'm staying in a townhouse right now mm. but i got them all at the house and after i got them all broken up with each other all fighting over petty nonsense and drama after doing all this i felt powerful i felt like i put a wrench inside something that i just wanted to destroy because i craved destruction back in my day because back in my time i craved it drama was intrinsic to what i am as a human it was something in my dna that craved conflict and i didn't mean to do it but i meant to do it i loved it I was not a good person. 
I didn't even try to be. I didn't even attempt to be a good person. Not even slightly. Not even a little bit. Didn't even try my best. And I did it. Why did I do it? Just because. It's because I felt like it. And afterwards. Yeah, back in my day four years ago. You know, back in my day four years ago. <laughs> he's 27. And I think he said this is around 22, 23. So like four years ago, which is hilarious. Which, yeah, I guess. Like people change for sure. But anyway. Destroying this and dismantling everything. I, at the tail end of everything, slept with them all one more time to figure out who was the best. It was the Finn boy. I had to figure out which one I had to talk to the most. To this day, I'm still friends with all of them. Hmm. To this day, they're all still cool with me, but not cool. Okay, so they're all cool with him, but not cool with each other. Um, cap, 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 cap. With each other. Celia, welcome to memberships. To this day, they know what I've done. They don't care because they consider me fun. And that's all they cared about was me being fun. They didn't care that I did something evil. I started this drama. They didn't care about that. Because they said if their bond was strong enough, they wouldn't have even been wedged by me. And that's fair. That's valid. I like that. Takes off the responsibility off my chest. That's all I wanted. No responsibility, realistically. Hmm. I like that. And that's how I destroyed an entire polycule. Anyways, bye. Wow, that was a lot. That was a lot. Okay, cool. Let's go to his virginity story. When I Are you ready? I lost my virginity at eight years old. Top comment. I haven't watched this video yet, but there's no way bro isn't a victim. He says... Listen to this person. I am deeply not a victim. I, for most of my life, was the antagonist. Just watch his other videos and you'll see he's not a victim. Listen to this person. I am not a victim. I am the antagonist. Brother. When I was younger and just a boy growing up on the hard streets of Detroit, Michigan, I encountered my father in the living room commencing bedroom activities. I didn't know what was going on, but he was with my mother and my mother looked me dead in the eyes, fully in their birthday suits and said, you gotta learn this one day. I was but the age of eight years old. I had a girlfriend at the time. I went to Catholic school growing up and I was pretty excited. I showed my girlfriend what my parents had done and my dad had specifically told me of everything of what to do that messed me up mentally i didn't even know it messed me up mentally but i thought that was normal that was my normal back in the day i grew up with that that was regular for me i just thought it was normal a few years pass and the girl passes of lung issues and i'm mentally going through the trauma of understanding she died Standing death and knowing that I lost my innocence at eight years old because my father was a man that was diabolical and devious and I was a fool when I was growing up. I would go and steal playboys from under his bed when I didn't even have to steal them. He would give me them willingly and openly. That was my life. That was my childhood. That was the horrors that I went through. Later in life, I joined a little bit of a fracas with the people on the blue team. Fine gentlemen. They addressed me by my name. They said, sub. My nigga, how you doing, cuz? And I said, good evening. Salutations. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Are we going to do some rabble rousing? Maybe sell a bit of narcotics? And they said, yeah, man, you, you don't got to talk like that. So that's what I did. That was part of my childhood. But during the entirety of me growing up in crypt territories, I also grew up doing things called trains. And I'm not talking about your locomotives or conductors. I'm talking about one girl, five guys. And I'm not talking burgers and fries. That's essentially what was going on. My little Okay, he's neurodivergent. He's trying to make a name for himself. He's an artist. He's so traumatized. The therapy work this man is going to have to do is insane. I'm seeing little to no introspection happening. I'm seeing purely somebody who's trying to sensationalize his horrible traumatic childhood in order to make a name. I totally get it. Uh... I feel you. I, if you go back and watch my earlier content when I was like 19, well, you can't because they're private now. But, you know, I tried all di different ways to express myself to sort of like joke about my traumas. 
I was never as traumatized as this. I grew up in a very different uh, bringing. So like, thank God for that. Like I, I grew up in the opposite home where there was absolutely no corn allowed and I've never heard or seen my parents doing it, but we have 10 kids in the family, so they must have been doing it sometime, okay? So I didn't grow up like this, but he's doing the scripty thing where it's like, I am speaking from my consciousness, but it's kind of scripted. And it's 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 coming off as inauthentic because it is a performance, but then he has the audacity to say that like Amaranth is a performer and he's authentic. So that's where I'm confused about. Is how's Amaranth any more performative or less performative than this? You know what I mean? Like, it's interesting that he was so critical of Amaranth as being fake and he's authentic. But like, what is this? This isn't this is not authentic. Right. Just strange. Right. Millennial Classics, thank you much for the super chat says, could you do a video on Cam Newton's convo with Dr. Brian specifically when he talks about wanting more kids when they already have three baby moms? I'm confused about the discourse. Oh, I saw if that's is that the conversation with um I saw that on TikTok and I did want to cover it. Yeah, I forgot about it. Thank you for reminding me. I totally forgot that I was thinking about doing that. So yes, I will write this down. We'll probably do it Wednesday because I'm doing this today. And then R Rashad Crenshaw and I are doing a collab tomorrow. But I definitely want to cover that. So maybe we'll talk about it the day after because I definitely want to cover that for sure. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, let me see. Chat says something about him is giving the I'm the bad guy. So when if some information comes out, he can say I've always said I'm not a good person. Maybe. Brit, what level is Chapel Roan? I don't know. A two. I don't know anything about her. There's no reason to think she isn't a two. Most people are twos. There's no reason to think Chapel Roan isn't a two, right? There's no reason to think that. Everyone is defaulted to. Unless you know something about anybody, they're probably twos. Because like twos can be self-aware too. Just because Chapel self self-aware about her boundaries doesn't mean she's not a two, right? I don't know anything about her though. Little brain, my little mind at the tender age of 12 and 13 and 14. Didn't really understand what was going on. But I knew that I was accepted in a community because I was lonely. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have anybody that would help me out. I didn't have anybody that was there for me. I just wanted somebody to be my friend. My parents were going through a very, very tumultuous divorce mm. caused by me by the way i caused a divorce i'm not gonna say like oh you were a bad kid so you caused a divorce no i actively orchestrated it it was crazy anyways we're not gonna talk about that what we're gonna talk about is the fact that i had a deep and intimate connection with explicit and promiscuous materials and i am coming to you open and honest open like the holes i witnessed on the internet honest unlike the films i watched growing up i'm coming to you open and honest and telling you that I had a problem growing up. I would consume multiple sources of media every day. It was always everywhere. It was in every source of media. It was so normalized that it messed me up mentally. I didn't even recognize that it was an issue. I didn't even recognize that it had destroyed me. How did, how did it mess him up, but then he said he's not a victim? It's like people can't understand. You can be a victim of something, and you can be messed up by something and it doesn't define you for your whole life. But how is he saying it messed me up, but I'm not a victim? You're obviously a victim of horrible parenting. You're a victim of circumstance. You're a victim of so much already. And did he just like move over the whole lo losing my virginity at 18 or am I confused? So did he sleep with his little girlfriend who was also eight years old and then she died of lung stuff? See, these got to be fake stories. And if they're not fake stories, then like. This is such a weird video. Like all of this feels like major cope, but all of it feels very dishonest, which is what he was also mad at Amaranth for when she was saying like he feels inauthentic and he was like, why? And I was like, um, hello? But okay, you guys are saying, I'm my, uh, Michelle says, I'm honestly very confused about this story. It's bouncing too much for me. I swear he has ADHD or neurodivergency and he can't, this is like very like performance kid. This is a very specific brand of, I never fit into my bubble, right? Like I never fit into my bubble. I never knew where I belonged. So I belonged everywhere. And he still feel like feels like that on YouTube. That's why he reached out to Amaranth. And he's like, who are my real friends? As if Amaranth will know. As if Amaranth will know who your real friends are. So I think, um, I think, okay, wait, wait, wait. Chat says, I don't understand his obsession with coming off as authentic. I think that's the, the neurodivergency. I never grew up in my bubble. I don't know where I belong thing. I think he doesn't know where he belongs, 
but he doesn't know how to be authentic. And he obviously is very traumatized and honestly borderline like so unhealthy. I definitely wouldn't want to engage like in many ways. Like going, uh, it's very, it's very unhealthy, you know? So he's just going through it. He's going through like who am <laughs> Chat says feel feels like off brand Pierre. Pierre XO mentioned in the chat. Oh my God, that's so funny. Stop. <laughs> Literally, Pierre XO is like this. Sneeko is like this. He's like this. They're just so desperate to be important, so desperate to be in their ego. They're so desperate to be unique. They're so desperate to be authentic that they're just the fakest motherfuckers out there, bro. Fakest, most inauthentic, most fucked up people out there, bro. But they got the it thing. They got that artist thing. All three of these guys have a thing. They have the thing. But I don't know, you know, so much for having the thing if this is what it gets you, I guess. Mentally, I did not recognize that this was so normal in my lifetime that I would just talk about it casually. I would ask my friends questions. Hey, how fast do you ejaculate? You masturbate today? Hey, how big is it? Just regular questions. Little guy stuff. Stuff that boys do. You know, like going a circle and circle jerk each other. Just regular stuff that guys do is what I had assumed what it was, but that was not normal. It is not normal. Stop. Chad is saying he killed a guy back in Egypt and had to flee to the U.S. I know him personally. I don't think that's true, but just FYI, he is Egyptian. He was born in Egypt, as far as I remember from his conversation with FD Signifier. And then he moved here, and then his name is hard to pronounce, so he goes by, I guess, Syros or whatever to make it easier on people. But I'm confused on his whole life story because he said he was eight years old in Detroit so I doubt he killed a guy in Egypt but I think he is from Egypt I think he is or his parent yeah I think he is and then he was Amish I'm confused about this man's lore you know what I'm gonna say it's all a lie because I don't know I'm gonna say it's all a lie because I do not know I think it might be all for fun I don't who knows I don't know he sounded really real when he was talking to FD and he was having a conversation with him so now I don't know. I don't know. For a child to lose his innocence at eight years old, it is not normal. To what if he's doing the TikTok thing that TikTokers do, which is like make up a story to tell to the internet as an art form. And then his real self is the person we saw talking to Amaranth and who's going to talk to FD. Maybe that's his real self. And this is like his persona. And so the stories he's telling isn't, they aren't real. They're, they're the art he's doing maybe I have a father that actively encourage promiscuous activities it is not normal to have a father that tells his daughter you should have 27 kids with 27 different baby dads that is not normal that was not normal for me it hurts and I think about it a lot I have to deal with this as an adult as a person Conrad with the super chat. Thank you so much. It says this guy's imitating performers and he has no voice or identity. So I think he could be very real. He just doesn't know how to be a real real as a performer. Maybe. Yeah. I could see that. <laughs> maybe he really likes Andy Kaufman. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oof. As a human, because it hurts. It hurts me mentally, deeply, and emotionally. It tears me asunder. It tells me to and fro, up and down, left, right, north, west, south. And I'm telling you this story about my life. I'm telling you this because you also may be addicted to it. You also may have been disrupted in your brain chemistry. It may be so normalized. Oh my that God, this video is so long. <sighs> See, is this clickbait? I lost my virginity at eight years old, but then he just bypassed... You know what I mean? This is four minutes into a 14 minute video. You see it everywhere. You may see it and think to yourself, oh, that's great. You have not grown up from your childish mindset and think to yourself, well, it's just how society is. They know that sex sells. They know that it is regular to push it, to give it to our children, to give it to us, to give it to people like me, to give it to that. And you are going so far depraved that where you can't even get off to anything but well, I got to watch, you know, 15 women Olympics with one guy. I got to watch that. I got to watch prolapse. I got to watch this. I got to watch that. You're going deeper and deeper and deeper down into this rabbit hole until you don't feel any stimulus. 
Discord says, not going to lie, he sounds like someone doing off-brand Dave Chappelle jokes. He might be. And then I see you guys are sending me TikToks about his life. Let's get into that after because I'm going to watch a video about his relationship. So I don't want to skip to TikToks until I'm done watching the YouTube videos. But I don't know if I want to sit through this whole thing. Buzzwords, normally growing up, most replayed. Okay, let's go to the most replayed. Introspectively. And I got... Oh, he said introspectively. Petitioning him to me to deal with my addiction to things, to, to chaos, to destruction, to pornography, the main thing of this video. And I dealt with it. I dealt with myself. I dealt with myself introspectively. And I got past it all. I got past it all by myself. And that sucked. I, really I did it all on my own. No one's ever loved me. He reminds me of Sam from Love is Blind. No one's ever loved me. No one's ever loved me. I realized that what I was doing was He's a level five. He's a level 69 girl. Was not unhealthy. It was just misdirected. I think people are drastically misguided and desperate in their loneliness. They learn at a very young age that they have to hide that eccentric core <sighs> of who they are. But sadly, they don't have to do that. They don't have to do that. They don't have to do that. They hey, have to hey, be- Hey, 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 He's Smith. He's like, <laughs> shout out to Smith. <laughs> he's like Smith. He's like doing the performance art thing. That's why I like Smith. He's so funny, but he's never even real himself. I can't wait to see him. He, we're doing a panel this weekend. Smith is always like, authenticity. Well, he's literally performing. Smith is a performer. Nobody's authentic. You can't be like this and be authentic. Putting music in your videos is inauthentic. Like anything you're doing to convince, like move the audience in a direction is in, it's inauthenticity. Because people don't operate like that. You ha If you're having a soundtrack to your life, like this is how people operate. He just grabbed this kitty. You better be nice to that kitty, sir. People, they have to exist. They have to love and learn with one another. I do not like the way he is manhandling that meow meows. This world is horrifying to go through. It's not so scary if you do it alone, though. <gasps> he just threw the cat. I don't like the. I don't like the imagery of that. I don't like the imagery of it. I don't like the imagery of it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I know cats land on their feet, but I don't like it. I don't appreciate the imagery of throwing the cat on the bed. Or whatever. That better have been a bed. I don't like it. I don't like it. Fired. Red flag. It's not so scary if you do it with someone else, though. It's not <sighs> so scary if you do it alone, though. It's not so scary if you do it with someone else. Oh, I just started sneezing in the background. What the fuck? Oh, it's not so scary if you do it alone. It's not scary. If you're alone or with someone, it's not scary. If you're kind. And I hate that. Discord said he sounds like the kid in school who goes on and on about all the fights they've been in. Literally. Literally. I hate that I have to be kind when others can't. I hate that I have to continually do this. That I have to turn my right cheek to let the other person slap me. But I'm going to keep doing it. Because it hurts. And I was deeply and disgustingly addicted to these stupid things. I was addicted were you addicted or that's I I'm so over people being like I was addicted. I was addicted. Were you addicted or were you just a dick? To promiscuousness. And it sucked. It rotted my brain and it ruined my core. And it made me make this video today to talk about it. Because some of you are going through this right now. And I want to tell you something. If you've made it this far. Ugh. We all have to go through the pressures of modern existence. We all have to be a good parent, a good brother, a good son, a good daughter, a good mother, a good father. We all have to be wise without condescension. We all have to do these crazy things. We all got to be smart. We all got to be great. We got to have the correct political opinions. We all got to not be transphobic. We got to be transphobic sometimes. And some people want to be transphobic. We don't even have to do that. We just have to be good people. We got to be bad people too. We got to be bad people. We got to want to destroy people. We got to want to love people. We all got to find a group and fit in, right? And we're all just trying to find some small meaning in some tiny compartment of existence. Yeah, he's trying like really hard to be like, I'm deep, bro. Next. When I I'm getting bored. I'm getting bored very fast. <laughs> okay. I was married to a 90-year-old lady when I was 18. Okay, let's see. When I was younger and in the prime of my youth, I went through a horrifying battle with a disease that ravaged the entirety of my body. It's a zodiac sign. You can figure it out. Now then, after that happened, I... I'm so exhausted. We got to start that again. 
When I was younger and in the prime of my youth, I went through a horrifying battle with a disease that ravaged the entirety of my body. It's a zodiac sign. You can- Cancer? So he's an Amish guy who had cancer and was a crip. And now here's, I was married to a 90 year old at 18 figure it out now then after that happened i proceeded to be homeless because i was a gangbanger and i didn't want to stop my gangbanging activities my mother pleaded with me saying you don't have to do this anymore you're a grown man and i said mother i tell you this with my whole chest no and she said well you can go outside and i said okay i'll tell you i'll take a walk no i mean a walk forever leave my house you're a grown man now and i said well I guess I'll leave. I gave my mother the remainder of any money I had because she had raised me and I was happy about that. And I said, Mom, I know you don't want to deal with me and I've been a very difficult child. Take this. I gave her $7,233. I didn't get, I didn't take anything for myself because I feel like I didn't deserve it. I knew I wasn't going <sighs> Thank you, Conrad, for the super chat. No, Brit. It was Capricorn. Of course it was. Of course it was. going to change, but I could probably make that money back. Wouldn't it be that difficult. And so I decided to live behind Walmarts, behind bakeries, inside of hospitals, visiting people I didn't know. To and fro, I was homeless, visiting people, hanging out, just vibing, rocking out. One of the people I visited, his name was Rodney. Old guy. Cool dude. Loved hanging out with Rodney. Great guy. He would tell me old stories about his life. Back in the day, I used to be a stud. A stud? Used to be getting them, boy. I used to be getting his slang and... Pain is everywhere. Uh, he's slinging my. Jesus Christ. I mean, he's, like I said, he's got 400,000 followers on TikTok, much smaller following on YouTube, like 30,000 subscribers. The only reason I know about him is from TikTok, but he felt so fake and clickbaity to me. And then, of course, um, I know him from the conversation he just had with FD Signifier, which I love FD. So, like, this is all just very confusing to me, but I do not. This is, I am not the audience for this man. Um, Maiden says it's your fault if you jump to conclusions with cancer, to be honest. <laughs> well, I thought it was actually Pisces at first, but then I switched to cancer because I thought that'd make me sound better. Uh, Goombly glamp going nuts to and fro I was going in. I said, really? That's insane. He said, insane in the membrane, brother. And we talked and talked and talked. And I spoke to more old people and more old people. And it was really Conrad, thank you for the super chat, says he was riddled with its Scorpio. Mm-hmm. 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 Fun. Mm -hmm. Hanging out at the hospital. Nobody visits old people like that. They really don't. They don't hang out. Ah, uh, yes. You're the best of us. You visit the old people. Well, the rest of us don't. We stay home and masturbate. Mm-hmm. Out with people. They don't get visits from family or friends because most of them are probably gone or busy with their own lives. And nobody wants to visit granddad or grandma. No one really likes to do that. So I took up that mantle, hanging out with people, hearing their life. Literally Japanese, literally Japanese, bro. I'm just like, come on. Life stories and learning about everything they've ever done. It was very refreshing. I learned so much. And I also used their showers inside the bathroom, mm. lied about being a family member and took the pills that were laying around to sell them to other people. Vivance, things of that variety. I was just selling them. It was nice. I gained a steady amount of income and I was staying in a motel long before, but it was becoming to and fro where I had to struggle for my existence and I hated it. Until one day, I met a woman. A woman who had a tenure to her life, a sense of vitality, youthfulness to her appearance and her vigor in the way that she spoke. It was amazing. Her name was Margaret. Margaret knew that I was not a family member, knew that I was not somebody that was nice or kind or anything of that variety. Because I really wasn't. I just was a person. Visiting the old folks and stealing their meds. What a saint. <laughs> You guys crack me up, bro. Yes, Alice is a dude is trying to be a real life anime MC. He literally is. He's like, I am the main character. And I'm like, sir. That's why he's like, I'm not a victim. I'm the protagonist. And I'm like, oh, my God. Even Naruto was traumatized, bro. Anime characters are the most traumatized. Hello? Do you not know the memes? Person trying to live. I sat down and I said, Hey, you mind if yeah, yeah, yeah. K.O. says I can see why he's more popular on TikTok and not on YouTube. And long form content, he becomes more annoying. Yeah, this is unbearable. And we're, y'all, we are less than three minutes in, y'all. Less than three minutes in. 
Holy fuck. If I talk to you for a little bit, and she said, you seem evil. And I said, yeah, that's fine. And she said, no, like good evil. And I said, huh? We spoke and she explained what good evil was. Evil in a sense that it was not brought upon me. Like I was fighting a nature that was imposed upon. A situation in my entire life that I was put into this world about. And Margaret, God bless her, delicious old soul, said, come back tomorrow and we'll talk. We spoke. I came back the next day and the next day and the next day. And I learned so much about her life. How she had lost her husband 27 years ago to gun violence true chat says he's creating fan fiction about himself yeah that's kind of what it feels like uh you know it feels like when i was like 15 16 17 i would watch these like performers perform stories like this that are fake but sort of based off of your life but also fake and i would think like oh there's something deep and meaningful happening here and then i grew out of that in my 20s and i feel like he's still there I feel like he literally thinks he's like creating something very deep and important, which I get it. Like he's 27. He's figuring himself out. Like no judgment. We all do cringy shit. Like I've done so much cringy shit. I'm not here to judge that process. I'm just here to point it out. Violence. How she had lost many parts of her life. How her own grandchildren were trying to poison her because they didn't want her to live too long. And the reason she was even in the hospital was because of said poison about how her family had given up on her yes thank you maiden maiden says he's fleshing out the whole persona like a D, &D character very neurodivergent i'm telling you he's a neurodivergent king this is like his weird he's trying to figure out where he belongs in the bubble so he's like making his avatar and he just doesn't know you know what i mean he just doesn't know where he fits which is fair so he's trying to like make his own bubble but for him to explain to Amaranth, like to, for him to describe himself as like famous on TikTok with 400,000 followers is crazy. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. People with millions of followers wouldn't say they're famous because like it doesn't mean anything. You could have 4 million followers and definitely not be famous. So the fact that he even described himself as like popular or famous is like Ma'am, sit down, bro. You could have a million followers on TikTok and nobody even heard you. Her and her family refused to visit her because they said she was. And then he had the audacity to call Amaranth like fake for being famous. Oh my God, girl. Too crazy and too psychotic. And they tried to get her mentally unfit because they wanted what she had. They wanted her money. She was loaded. She had a lot of it. She had two houses. And each one house had a bunch of animals in it that she went to go take care of. And the other house was hers. Now, I don't tell people this part of the story a lot about the two houses. But I thought I'd bring it up now now that I'm expressing the entire story. So, I proceed to say, well, that sucks, monkey balls. Anyways, I'm going to be going. She said, wait. I said, hmm? I turn, look around, look her deep in the eyes and say, is there something you need? She says, you're homeless, aren't you? I said, I don't have a place to stay, correct? Perhaps you do. She says, you should check me out the hospital and I'll let you stay with me. I said, check you out the hospital. Looks like you're checking me out right now. And then she said, we should get married. I said, whoa, 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 lady, we just met. At least take me to dinner first. Come on now. This is a little bit crazy. She said, no, you check, you, we get married. You can check me out the hospital. We get all these things through. It's all set. I said, huh? Okay, I'm going to check in with you guys. How you doing? I see some of you are bailing on the stream because it's like too much. We're not even five minutes into a, like an almost 17 minute video. I would like to, after this, I would like to take you to his interview with FD so you can see the difference and how he talks. And I, I want you to see like if you see what I see. So let me know if you guys still want to finish this video because already I just think it's fake. I can't engage with the story because I just think it's a fake story. You know what I mean? Huh? That you can do that? And she said, You're 18, right? And I said, Freshly turned 18, much like an amateur P film. I am freshly 18. Okay, you guys are like not okay, good. Okay. Okay, we're not vibing. Okay, good. Because, okay, we'll, f hold on. So I just want to show you his channel. So, okay, we invented everything. Black people invented, insert there. The illusion of free to play. I was married to a 90-year-old woman. What is black privilege? Being famous sounds horrible. Okay, so it's like these are his videos. Uh, I If I was in hell, would I know? I got kicked out of, I was the only black guy in a village. Okay, I got kicked out of the village. Uh, I love minimum wage. It makes me feel so good. Professional yapping manual. Insomnia can be fixed by being a psychopath. 
Uh, you fear death and become immortal. Okay, how to alienate, annihilate, sorry, any feelings of jealousy. Okay, the illusion of the white black guy. Okay, you are not an Iorio. Okay, so all these things. Okay, the legend of Korra. Love that. Didn't he say he was 19 at the beginning? He's 27. As of now, he's 27. Okay, so then he had this conversation with FD, which you can see I did not finish. I'm about halfway through. And he comes off very like a little bro. Okay, so what does it mean to be black? Okay, pretty interesting. He said, this was re-uploaded from my old channel. So I actually don't know when it originally happened then. I don't know how old it is in comparison. So if this was uploaded in August, but it's up from his old channel, let's say it was in the last year, maybe. Brother. So, so look at the difference in vibes. Like, look at the difference in vibes. Oh, hold on. I'm a little bit big. Let me, let me, hold on. Brother. So, um, right, so go ahead. You, you, you were talking about how I hit him with the hook once I got once I got a foothold, <laughs> yeah. and I stopped being so nice. And I'm happy you caught that because I, I fear like one of my. I just dropped the video yesterday. I don't know if you caught it yet. Oh, I, I watched. And I watched about, the, the yeah, yeah. And it's about and like it's so at the end, I'm kind of like very purposely like my thing now is I don't have a, as big a white audience as people like to imagine, partially because I be swinging. You know, but I also know, as I said in the video, that I'm I'm very approachable. I make a lot of radical politics around black issues very approachable. Naturally, I'm not trying. I was a teacher. I worked with kids. I worked with a lot of white people. I, I'm 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 in Atlanta. So I'm comfortable in my blackness on all these levels, and so like that has a weird confluence to make it like, well, I can talk to this. I can hear this black person talk about these things, and once and so. Once I caught on to that as I grew, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't let him get away with that. <laughs> All right, I got this for, this big check from the Bo Burnham video and I looked at the comments and it just made me really uncomfortable because I was, I was catching the Van Jones um, CNN energy. Um, I was getting that ta Coats, Coates and I fuck with ta Coats, Coates, right? No, no disrespect, but it was just kind of like, I may, this would be, if I really was to do this, this is too much money. Okay, hold on. He's such a chameleon. Even his posturing changes depending on who he's speaking to. I think that's very neurodivergent. Because listen to me when I say this, I do that as well. But I do it because I'm trying to make the other person feel comfortable because I feel like no one's ever going to be comfortable if I'm fully myself because I am a lot, right? Like that's the feedback I've gotten my whole life is Brittany's a lot. So because I get that feedback, I try to tailor myself to making people feel more comfortable because it doesn't bother me to do that. And I'm happy to do it because I still feel pretty satisfied after an interaction when I do it. And I think people feel entitled to like, they'll be like, oh, no, Brittany, be your full self. Um, I don't like you that much, so I'm good, but I like you enough to be cordial. And I'd rather mirror what you're doing a little bit when I'm socializing so I, I don't think he's necessarily malicious, but I think he's so traumatized and so deeply traumatized that he hasn't really like learned how to relax. But also that's not a bad thing for you to mirror other people. I do. I talk like people. I actually think that's why I partially have um, like I should I'm going to get tested for autism a little bit because well, not a little bit, but because I have this thing where I do I how you talk, I will mimic it like how you move. I will mimic it. I will like mimic it when I'm talking to a person because I feel like we're forming a bubble between the two of us. But then I don't mind if you take on my mannerisms. But like if you ask my partner, like which one is Britney's mannerism, it's everything together. Like I am a very, uh, I'm not a consistent personality. Like I have a lot, I'm multifaceted. So people expect you to have one personality type and like that's how you act everywhere. Some days I'm like super happy and goofy and bubbly. And some days I'm like, I'm just, mul I'm, a, I'm, I'm whatever I want to be in the moment and the safety of my home. But in public, when you're socializing, you usually have to be a certain level of acceptable, right? So like there's an acceptability in terms of socializing that I think is okay. You know, I don't think it's bad that you consider the person you're talking with and you try to speak in a way that makes them feel comfortable, right? And at the same time, I personally don't always want to be I don't always need to say what I'm thinking, you know? I think that's important. 
Discord says, I do see it. I do see how safe I can, uh, I am to be autistic queer. It can be a safety thing. It can be exactly. It could be a safety thing. Right. I just think that ultimately we have to, you know, decide. I think so. Oh, I had a conversation with Smith about this where he was like concerned that I might be mirroring people in a way that's not authentic to me. But he has to remember like with peace and love, not only am I older, but I know I'm making a choice. And this audacity of the youth to think that we want to be our vulnerable selves with everybody we meet is so f emo, twenty, you know, 2003 MySpace. Like with peace and love, I just want to go to an event and almost feel like we're coworkers and go the fuck home. I don't want to be close to any of you. I just want to be the version of myself that gets along with you the most. And then I want to go the fuck home because I really am not here trying to be like, super close to everybody. I already got those people and I'm good. And I think sometimes people just think, oh, like you have to be authentically yourself 100% to ever have a connection with people. Nope. You can have an amazing connection with somebody who doesn't know anything about you. So, you know, I just feel like there's a little bit of that happening. So anyway, good comment on his body language, but he is not performing right now. He is talking to FD. When he's on his videos telling his stories, he is performing. So keep that in mind, right? Okay. To not have a more explicit political agenda. I just personally feel uncomfortable. If I'm going to talk about, talk around certain political concepts um, and not really like, you know, challenge. If I'm going to be renting out my blackness to a, uh, a portion of white people, then it needs to be spiced. It needs to have, you know, some the best I could offer and not be overly comforting because I never forget uh, of all people, Hank Green, who people tend to shit on. I don't know if you're familiar with Hank Green of the Vlog Brothers. Uh, so yeah. people shit on them because they, you know, they're moderates and liberals, et cetera, um, which I understand that that critique. But uh, Hank Green said some of the realest shit to me in one of my videos. He was like, yo, white people don't want to fix racism. They really just want to not have to think about it. And like if they watch the right black person's video and it makes them feel. This is a really powerful conversation that I think is important. And FD says something that I think about with my channel was like, I know I'm on the right path when I have like a certain kind of audience. And he feels that too. I'm going to skip a little bit because I want to get to the point where they talk about um Kuros because this video is about them, but this is a good convo and you guys should check it out. So let's skip a little bit ahead. Mother could not pronounce Caleb. She called me Kyle. Oh, she, you knew it was Arabic just now. No, no. Everybody said us like it's just. Oh, hold on. <laughs> but you know, okay. it is. You know, it is. I'm very proud of that video. It's it's so it's so impressive to see the switch up because you, you in essence did exactly what I did, but in like almost reverse order. It's kind of fun. Mm. Because when I when I was when I first got to America, because I was born in Egypt, uh, that's why I okay. like my name is actually Setos. Like it's just that's my actual name. It's not like some moniker it's or dope. title. <laughs> okay, I didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this must be some animation I ain't heard. <laughs> no, no, no. Everybody was saying that. Been in the saga. Or Every something. <laughs> everybody is <laughs> there. Everybody's like, oh, so you got that from? See, and he's got okay. Yeah, Chaz says he's so calm and collected. Whoa, so different than his persona. But that's why I don't understand why was he yelling at Amaranth for having a persona when he obviously has one, right? That's why I'm confused about him. Why is he being so mean to Amaranth if he also has a persona and he does look baked? I don't, I almost don't believe he's not baked right now. He got baked face. Look at his eyes. That's what I look like when I'm baked. So like he says he's never done drugs and never had alcohol. I don't know if that's true or if that's part of his persona. I'm just very confused on which part of his is real. But this is a very different person than the person who yelled at Amaranth, and it's different than the person who performs in his videos. From Bleach. No, my first name is Seros de Grants. That's my first name. I, <gasps> I... Chat says maybe he was his persona when he said that about Amaranth. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe you said maybe that was his persona to be a hypocrite. Maybe. Mm. Ooh. okay maybe i just it's so long and goofy i just don't like saying that so i just shorten it to saros and, my, and my name is arabic too so i understand your pain <laughs> thank you understand oh my god uh, my name is arabic too it's Brittany. 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 it's very arabic 
<laughs> thank you. Holy shit. You knew it was Arabic. That's the best part. Thank you. Oh, shit. So I, I, I have this, this. It feels good being seen by FD, which is nice. FD is very good at seeing people. F, FD has like really good energy when it comes to seeing people. So, okay. He feels very good being seen. We love to see it. It's long ass name. And I got here when I was eight. Nobody could say it. So they were like, well, we, you have two apps. Okay. So he got here when he was eight and he also lost his virginity when he's eight. And he also ended up having his most messed up time in his life with his dad when he was about eight to 12. Mm. Since you could, you know, keep settles there to grants. Or you could become Caleb. Ah, what if he's doing something similar to Murkoff the Perk? Yeah, he might be. He might be doing an ADHD persona thing, which is very, even, even, even Sneeko is doing that. That's what I'm saying. Sneeko is performing. That's why I don't believe anything he says. And I don't believe anything he says. I don't believe anything Merc says. I mean, I believe them, but I don't believe them. I don't know what they're, I don't know who the real them is. I don't know who the real them is. Now, if I find out he also has ADHD, mm-hmm. Who is the real them? And I'm like, uh, let's test out Caleb. So my mother could not pronounce Caleb. She called me Caleb, and that confused everybody because she's Arabic. And I was like, okay, we're just. Even when he says like she's Arabic, that's so interesting. Like she's versus saying she's Arab, she's Arabic. Like it's probably just a misspeak, but it's kind of funny. Like the way he talks about his life growing up. I wonder how much of his life. He has a solid memory of based off of how he talked about it in those videos. Got to go back to Setos. So Cetos and I, I, from eight nice. to like literally like 16, crip, just, just crip, like immediately. I was like, oh, in I'll, Detroit. Yeah, in, in Detroit, in T Toledo and Detroit, like two places I frequented a lot with those two places. Dude, I'm, I'm a, <laughs> That's where my family is. I'm a Midwesterner, so I, I understand. I've been to Detroit. Okay. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember it very well. I was mostly in like a hotel room because my mother was like, yeah, we're not leaving this hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> smart mother smart mother is <laughs> i would i would have sold you some coke i would have <laughs> that, that was interesting that he did sold drugs and was in a gang but never did drugs himself never drank alcohol seems how many straight edge drug dr gang members are there it was my life livelihood and a lot of the large part of the time i just didn't trust white people so it was kind of a shocker for everybody when i pulled up to the family function with a white girl they were like uh, cause I had primarily only dated black women or like maybe Mexican right. women and everybody was like, Oh, you switched it up on us. Why'd you do that? And I was like, well, hear me out. She's funny. <laughs> I'm sure that had a lot of, I, I, I could imagine that being a lot of pressure to like suddenly bring a white woman. Um, my, my brother. I remember when I brought a white woman home for the first time, that's a joke. I've never brought a woman home to my family. <laughs> They're homophobic. <laughs> is my brother suddenly did that too? Now him, I think, is probably a lot more pro problematic because he hasn't dated a black woman since. <laughs> mm, he's, a, he's, he's swimming in the milk. He's swimming in the he, milk. He's, well, he, technically, he's he's only been dating Latino women, so I'll give him <laughs> I'll give him some I'll give him some modicum of like uh cope of of deniability. But like literally, he dated all black. He he brought one because my my family. I think I've alluded to. You know, we we uh, cultural black nationalists hotel adjacent. Like I didn't know what a hotel was, but I knew what a hotel was, mm -hmm. right? So, like you know, it was it was pretty overtly discussed in my family. Like, yeah, we don't really don't bring no white women home. Um, and then it just became don't bring no women home because like the, the people everybody was crazy. But that's all the conversation. And my brother, I'll never forget. My brother bought a Colombian girl home from college. Hey, I'm gonna skip around a little bit because we're. I love FD, but we're focusing on one time heroes. And it Hold on. was such a curve. Hold on. Tina went. Everybody was like, oh, I thought he was different. And I was like, uh, no, you he didn't. And, uh, Ch you, Ch Ch you yeah, it was a child's going to be no like Naruto. This nigga was going for an Asian girl if he had the opportunity. He's there's no <laughs> shot. Like, I, I, it's such a weird thing when you see a black man in power get with a, a non color woman. You're just like, oh, man. He's he's putting down black women, and for the most part, uh, Discord says I uh, somewhat um, so, some of what he says is probably true, but he definitely seems like an embellisher. It's how you tell a good story and how you are a good liar gets away with it. Yeah, he probably is an embellisher more than anything, right? But it's hard to see the differences. So then again, as a creative, like I I'm not drawn to content like his because it feels like it feels like there's a lie there, and I don't like it. It makes me feel awkward, right? 
They are. They're, that's all they do. That's all they want to do. They're just like, ah, oh, yeah, I got, I got this nice, you know, I got me a white girl. I'm like, okay, chill out. Mm. It's, it's not that serious. It's <laughs> This is, this is weird, dude. It's just, just you know, congratulations. <laughs> I guess. Let, I don't let's know. talk about football or something. <laughs> oh, let's... Uh, I think about RG3. That's, like, I, I thought I would get wow. hate messages. I get death threats. Like, people get um, the issues here. What I've discovered is that people um always, oh, I get so, I get death threats. Like, I, I thought I would get wow. hate messages. I get death threats. Like, people from, like, black people that are just like, I can't believe you with your natural hair and, and, and is out here just dating a white girl. I'm just like, she is the only reason my hair is healthy. Like, she spent such a disgusting, <laughs> like she spent such a disgusting amount of time learning black hair. She actively doesn't learn white hair because she loves the actual, like. Feels like Cope. Feels like Cope. Feels like Cope. Feels like Cope. She should dye your hair better if she's been the one doing it. I said what I said. Cultural. She 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 has cultural appreciation so deeply. It's wacky. Like she learned how to moonwalk before I did. That's crazy to me. I was like, there's no fucking shot you can moonwalk. Like white skinny girl just learn how to do a moonwalks in the middle of the club. I'm just like, fuck, I can't even do it. I'm I'm embarrassing my culture at that point. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm saying, I'm like, fuck. It, it's it's such a disconnect that I have with um with my own people now and it's, it's saddening at this point because all i want to do all most of my friends are black most of them are but also most of my friends while they are black they're niggas there's a big difference <laughs> like they are niggas like they will be like all right we gonna go up in this 7-eleven we taking everything okay hold up a second now friends what if we don't do that <laughs> and they're just like nah hmm You know, you know what I'm saying? He just, he's got a vibe to him that is like confusing to me. It feels like he's always trying to impress somebody. I don't understand the way he talks about people in that particular way. Like, like he tells stories about how he was in a gang and he was a bad person, but now he's the good person who tells his friends not to steal, even though... He's always like, yeah, I'm a bad person. It's just confused. Like, I'm confused about his relationship with himself. He obviously, like, look, there's obviously a struggle happening here, right? Like, again, I don't want to be the other. <laughs> I know the last time I said Myron had internalized racism, but this guy also feels like he's pretty much struggling with his blackness, which makes sense. And then it also makes sense why FD would try to meet him where he is. I'm going to be real. I feel like FD internally is thinking, what the fuck, but is also being like the good bridge builder because I feel like, I feel like in private FD would be like, but also it's a journey that a lot of people go on, but he feels like he never fit into the bubble. And this is a, this is the example of it. I feel like there's no way you were in a gang in a gang in a real way that you're you know what I mean? Like, he's not <laughs> chat. And yeah, I'll say it, girl. <laughs> you say it, girl. Because, like, I'm just like, oh, I don't know. Like, I yeah. Okay, you guys thinking the same thing about FD? I just feel like FD knows what he's doing. So I think FD's playing sort of this, like, older brother dad role where he's, like, kind of letting this man feel heard and seen. And he's going to try to give him, like, a... Uh, and it, like he's going to extend his community handout and maybe he learns from it. But the I mean, Kuros, he's like obviously very traumatized. He, he's obviously very a lot of things, but it feels like he was never fully in, fully in, you know, I, we, 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 we I'm very visible these days. <laughs> I also have like Joker here. <laughs> I, I, a lineup may not go well for me. It will. It so will I'm, I'm curious because I. So I've never been in an interracial relationship. I, I just mm -hmm. not a thing has ever been on my menu. Um, and I'm also now going on over ten years married. I'm not gonna be with my wife. Going on twenty years. I don't know. I've been off the market for a long time, mm -hmm. right? And so I haven't. And I, this is one thing. You know, I, so obviously, you probably know I did a video on interracial relationships a little while ago. And I thought about making it into the type of joint where I, where I talked to a lot of different people, but I had just kind of didn't want to put in as much like effort into all my videos the last couple of months. That's Ever fair. since Fuck the Police, I was like, look, we got to stop making every video an epic 
investigative journalism video. Um, but, you know, I don't know a lot about that experience. So you, you, it sounds like you get a lot of like hate and like general antagonism out and about. Is it be, do you think it's because you're in a, you know, uh, a, a... <laughs> here, oh. here, ghost. <laughs> yeah, something. Um, is it because you're in an environment that's not just like, so you, you know, you got your, your, your general black bourgeois, petite bourgeois environment. You got your working class, but it sounds like you surrounded by street niggas. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm, and I'm, so, I'm primarily surrounded by street niggas and a grandma that grew up in racist times. Uh, and my mother who t dealt with the nine 11. interesting wording grew up with a grandma in racist times i assume he means like segregation specifically versus like i mean so we're always in racist times but you know <laughs> i don't think it ends but yeah okay he probably means segregation then muslim hate like she stopped being muslim completely because of that and interesting you guys in chat are saying i don't know why fd is giving this kid grace but not kidology um that's a good question. I love Kidology. I love Z and I like FD Signifier. I think they're both really interesting and I like them both. I watch both of their content. Uh, if, you know, FD shows up in my chat sometimes and Kidology and I have collabed many a times and we say good things about each other. And I remember, do you know when FD came into my audience was after I made that video telling Kid, like, he doesn't want to hang out with us. It's not a big deal. And then FD showed up in my chat and I was like, hi, my bad. But like, also, it's nice because like, he's obviously a bridge builder, which I love a bridge builder. Um, but, I, you know, it's hard to say what about Kidology is difficult. But I would say that um, Kidology is a very unique person with a unique circumstance that it's also maybe too far from an FD to quite for them to quite see each other in a way that maybe would make sense for each other because because Kidology also went on that show that conservative show um trigonometry whatever it's called and I hate that show I hate that show they're just a bunch of freaking white centrists who don't know anything about marginalized communities or how they struggle and they always have people on that are sitting there like tooting their own horn and it's just annoying like it's just annoying you know so I uh, Kidology went on that show and I, I feel like that going on that show kind of signals to like somebody like FD that like you're more to the centrist view than the progressive view and I'm more progressive than anywhere near a centrist or like a conservative so it's very difficult when you're sort of navigating who to reach out to and who to build a bridge with. I think, you know, if you go on trigonometry, you might be too far away from even being able to see FD or like that perspective. But also it depends on your politics. I don't know what Kidology's politics are because she's pretty apolitical versus my politics is progressive. Like I'm a progressive, I'm more progressively inclined, right? Like I agree with Hassan a lot more but I also understand established Democrats have to work a certain way within the system. So there's always that difference. But because Kidology specifically is apolitical, um, I think that's what FD had the biggest problem with. And to be fair, I think she is apolitical in the sense that she doesn't do politics. But I think going on a show like Trigonometry can feel political because they obviously hate progressives. You know, so mm, it's hard to say. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Chat says, I have a feeling they were too far apart from each other to understand each other. Yeah. It feels more like that. Or maybe Kidology is not worth his time and investment because she's not going to be more progressive politically if she's not political at all. Like if she doesn't identify as political, then, you know, but Kidology is on a great journey right now. She's on a very important journey. Okay. She's on a very important journey. And I think, I think it's not going to do well in a community. I think Kidology has to make her own bubble to be fair. And I'm like I've I've dealt with racism from the Arabic community, the white community. For some reason, the Chinese community fucking hates me. I don't know what that's about. No idea. I thought we were cool. I thought Wu Tang Clan st stumped all that. I don't know what happened there. Anyways, <laughs> but it was it was, it was a whole it was a whole thing. Uh, being in a racial relationship, it creates a pocket because people look at me and assume so much. Mm. I started painting my nails because Prince painted his nails. I was nothing, no homosexual tendencies added to it. I saw Prince paint his nails, then I was like, I fucking love Prince. And I started painting my nails. 
And I was, everybody was like, oh, you must love men. I was like, well, that's a good assumption. But I just started painting my nails because, you know, Prince. That, did it. That's it. They said that about Prince, though. Yeah, and Prince was that's straight as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Prince was homophobic. Yeah. <laughs> it's because he was religious. Prince is low key homophobic, mm -hmm. which is hilarious. <laughs> it's an effeminate homophobic man. That's all he yeah, is. Prince, Prince is an effeminate homophobic man. Not like, you know, foaming at the mouth, you know, old, just kind of old school uncle homophobia. Yeah. You know, he was like, oh, you swing um, that way, that's cool, but, you know, get the. Oh! Alice says, I thought he was involved with a femboy. Yeah, and that polycule thing, was he dealing with the, the men's? Wait, is he gay? Is he bisexual? Now I'm very confused. But he could have still painted. You can be gay and still paint your nails because of Prince and not because you're gay. Yeah, wait. Is he homophobic? But then he was like in a polycule allegedly. See, I think they're fake stories. I just think they're fake stories. But over there. Like keep, that. That, keep that over there, yeah. you know, type, type energy. Um, That's interesting because so much of, of black social media content creation is like oriented away from um you know urban street it's like we adopt all that street aesthetic and like street okay so just you guys do you have the gist of how he is right like we got the vibes okay i want to show you so just to take it back so that okay you got it okay ready okay which one I was the only guy, black guy in a uh, Amish village. Uh, being famous sounds horrible. If I was in hell, would I know? Am I actually suffering? Uh, pick one. Pick one. Which one? We have to watch one more. How to alienate any feelings of jealousy. Uh, I want anything after the FD conversation. <laughs> Chat says no more. One more. Here. Uh, either the Amish one or the being famous. Which one? Amish? Okay, I see, I see Amish. Okay, let's go. Okay, ready? I was the only black guy at the Amish village. This was six days ago. This is six days ago. So do, do you see the difference between his, his selves? Okay, let's look at this self. Back when I was younger, I was homeless and I hated every minute of it. Strounding for food like a little raccoon going through garbage cans. One garbage can in particular oh. I went to was behind. Wow, I like how I'm watching it and you guys aren't watching it. Very cool, Brittany. Very demure. Very cutesy. Very cutesy. Back when I was I hate myself. Okay, hold on. I changed everything up for my FD reaction. Just a second. Please hold. Thank you. Okay. Back when I was younger, I was homeless and I hated every minute of it. Strounding for food like a little raccoon going through garbage cans. One garbage can in particular I went to was behind a bakery. They toss out their deos. And that was the best day for me because bread really fills you up. They have sweets, desserts, and things that have variety. And sometimes they toss out a specific kind of syrup and they toss that syrup out and it'd be full new syrup. And I drink that syrup because that was a delicacy for me. I put it on top of bread and have a fun time with it. One day though, they caught me. They caught me scrounging around. And I was trying to run away, but they had locked me in. And I knew at that point that I was probably going to go to jail. I thought to myself, well, at least there's dental in prison, I think. Okay, I can get dental and I get three square meals a day. I'd probably be uh, like, a, like a guy that holds the pocket in prison. I'm not going to lie to you there. Okay, I, I can deal with it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Take me, man, meat. Take me, man, meat. But that didn't happen. An Amish man came out and he said, taking our food? Why are you taking our food? What's wrong? I said, I'm homeless, I'm destitute, I'm broke. My life is in shambles. If you're not going to send me a prison, may I please have a sandwich? He said, wait here. So I waited. Against my better knowledge, I just decided I should wait. The two other workers were looking at me, and they were very impressed by my hair. And I said, pleasure to make your acquaintance. And they said, like a sheep's wool it is. Yes, it is. Thank you. I feel like that was the first time they ever saw a black person. And lo and behold, it may have been the first time they ever saw a black person because I was in a strange part of town. Guy came back out with a toasted bread and some meat in between. I was very excited. I said, thank you, good sir. If you'd like to stick your meat in between. He said, stop right there. I said, oh, sorry. I bit into the sandwich. He said, would you like a job? I said, I'm not a baker. He said, no, not here. I'm a bishop. I said, what? Like a church? He said, no, I live in a community. I come out here in order to sell products like furniture and bakeries and goods. I own two stores. Would you like to come with me? I said, I 
would love to. You said you got a house? He said, yes. A house, eh? Well, being unable to have housing of my own, I feel like this is a dandy idea. He so said, okay. When he was homeless, he says he lived with a polycule or he had an apartment and then he was, he lived in the polycule. When he was homeless, he lived in the Amish community, I guess. I don't know. Come with me. In the front, I had always saw this Tesla. Very nice Tesla. I loved it. I wonder who owned it. Turns out this Amish man, we're going to call him Jebby. Jebby owned a Tesla. Why did he own a Tesla? I do not know. We ride. And I have nothing on me. I have no shopping cart as most homeless people do. I should have got a shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Kay says when he was homeless, he was also in a gang, which is why he left home. So he was in a gang. Then he was homeless. And then he was in a this whole thing. I don't know. Ugh, this is so interesting. After seeing the FD interview, he's deaf putting on a persona, playing up a character in these stories. Some stories may be inspired by real things he went through, but dramatized for entertainment. Exactly. So why did he yell at Amaranth for being... Do you remember the way he yelled at her? For being fake? And doing a persona? He's like, I'm the most authentic bitch out here. And I'm like, um... You sure about that? You sure about that? Shopping cart have nothing to my name. And I just ride out there. And we stop. At a little area. On the outskirts of the town. I had a horse and a buggy. He parked his Tesla. Got out and said, the rest of the way will be on him. The horse? The horse. Okay. We get on the horse. Ah. I had never ridden a horse before. Very bumpy. Very, very bumpy. I enjoyed it. We arrive in town. Big clock tower in the middle. Bunch of little small places. It's like I went back in time. Like a renaissance festival, one might say. But much, much more racist. It was insane. I looked around, seeing all the pleasantries. The people seeing me, a gawk at me. Egad! Someone's covered in soot. A charcoal skin. I'd never heard that before. That was new. That was next level. Someone called me a moon grasshopper. I was like, what? Or moon cricket. I was like, oh my. There's so many new phrases I was learning. So many racially motivated things people were calling me. I was like, man, this is nuts. And I heard the same statement. The most common phrase. And I'll say it over and over again. Same. Same, Taylor. I need a visual timeline of his life immediately. Yeah, me too. I want a timeline of how this allegedly all happened, bruh. His hair was like sheep's wool. Surprisingly, it was actually. It really was. He took me to a barn. He said, okay, stay here. Now, in the morning, we're going to get you washed up. Just lay here first. I imagine you're tired. I was. I was exhausted. I had bread in my belly, and he gave me some water. I was very exhausted. I went to bed, woke up, and I learned farm work. Oh, my God. I hated it. I hated tilling to the land. I hated the fact that he had a six foot pig. I didn't know pigs could get that big. Pigs can grow six feet long. No one told me that. Heavy, big, disgusting hogs. Nasty. Shoveling manure. Making toe jam. I didn't know toe jam was a real thing. They're making toe jam. I learned how to make bread. And as I was perusing throughout the day, women began to look at me as if I was a commodity, a caricature of a human. They'd never seen a black boy before. And I was washed, not cleanly slaven, and I was covered in work. My pheromones must have attracted them because they were very, 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 very provocative with me. Showing me their ankles and everything. It was nuts. Anyways, time went on. And I began to learn the town, learn the village. It was very nice. They had made very, very horrible comments <sighs> towards me, but it was very nice. They were still very nice people. I would call it racism, but it felt more like prejudice in a sense. It was a big difference between those two. I was having a fun time. Truly, I was. Then. He's so ADHD or something. This is like. It's like. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'm glad one of you find him funny. He is funny, though. Yeah, this is just not for me. There's no way I would get through these videos if you guys weren't watching them with me. Yeah. This is just, like, so boring to me, but also, like, not in a, like, he's not evil. He's just, I think he's just a performer. I just don't like the way he yelled at Amaranth. That's it. If he didn't yell at her, this wouldn't be a big deal. But I don't know why he was being such a bitch when his whole shit is obviously so performative. One day, 
I had encountered <sighs> a woman who was having issues with her husband. And I had been learning blacksmithing and things of that variety and learning how to put up barns. So I was tired. And she had said, oh, would you like some water? And I said, oh, water? Oh, by goodness, I'd love water. She gave me some water. I said, damn, cuz, this is amazing. She said, why do you speak like that? And I said, I don't know, man. I, I, just, I just love speaking in certain different dialects throughout the day. It makes me feel good. She learned about my life and my life beforehand. She learned about the fact that I was married to a 90-year-old woman. She took that as an opportunity to say that she, I must like older women. And I said, I don't mind them. And she said, do you mind me? She had very supple breasts. <laughs> and I said, no, not at all. She had very strong hands, but somehow feminine at the same time. And she played with my hair, not knowing what to do with it. And we went to Funky Town, Uptown Funk You Up. It was nuts. Had a great time in the bedroom. And then she told all of her friends about it. And her friends decided that they wanted a piece of me. And I just wanted peace inside of my soul. But I was tossed around to and fro everywhere like the lead cheerleader i was everybody was so excited to get a piece of dark chocolate it was bitter much like actual dark chocolate because it felt undeserved and unrewarded i felt like it was just because i was black i didn't hate it but i didn't like it either but i did love it who talks like that wait a comedian talks like that i didn't hate it but i didn't chris rock who is it he's mimicking them I can see them in my head. Is it Chris Rock? Very neurodivergent of him to copy someone else's style while he figures out his own. Right? Chris Rock for sure, right? Re literally. Oh, and Dave Chappelle. Oh, is it Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock? Oh. But I... Yeah, he like does the head swing thing and the eyeball where he like looks to one side of the room and then the other. Yeah, it's like Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock. Maybe Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh, hold on. I gotta, ugh, I gotta get on my foot for this. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a inflection in the voice, which is so interesting that people, so, okay, I'm not mad about it. Look, when I was really, really young and I was trying to figure out my own style, it's like when I was writing, when I was really, really young, you could always tell who I was recently reading because my writing would sound like them. And same thing, that's, I mean, I know so many YouTubers who literally do not watch other YouTubers, so their content doesn't sound like theirs. And I understand that. So I think he's just trying to figure out what his vibe is and what his, like, uh, what his persona is going to be. So he's copying other people. He doesn't know who he is. Okay, hold on. So just a reminder. So he doesn't know who he is. Oh, let's see. I almost lost my life. How to pick up baddies at the anime convention. No, brother. My friend was dating his mother. Okay. It's like very sensational. Bisexual, but not, but gentrified. Pansexuality is gentrified bisexuality. Oh, God. Why aren't you making friends? Coward, go outside. She is cooked. Overcoming my narcissism. Okay, let's check that one out. But also, where's, where's that Amaranth video? Oh my God, where is it? Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Just kidding. Where is it? High school Amaranth. I don't even know. Hold on, what did... How long did I say that was? Didn't that just three months ago? There it is. I don't know what kind of people she's getting in her streams. I don't know. I don't have this... this big thing explaining how the people operate in their streams but it seems to be people that are lonely and desperate and want interaction from a woman so okay listen listen to this video so intrinsically and she has already watched it at the beginning but just to get a vibe back again has to be condescending and she has to be snarky and she has to be mean she has to do these things and it feels horrible i don't like it and it makes me dislike her as a person, but this isn't her true character, I think. I think this is some persona she's putting on. And it's not me trying to cope like, oh, she's a good person. No, no. I think if you have to put on a persona online to be more authentic when being online is your entire job, especially when you're doing it for 10 hours a day, you lose that part of yourself that is you. You lose a big part and core of what the, the character is and what the fake is and what the real is, like the, the, like the aspect of what you are. It, it, because... I could I could be on YouTube all day and just pulling this character. Hey guys, what's going on everybody? How are you doing? I could do that, but I don't do that. 
I don't. Uh, what you see on YouTube is kind of how I am in real life. You sure about that? What you see on TikTok is how I am in real life. Mm. The way I speak, the way I go about things, the way I operate. If there's no. You sure about that, bitch? Because this, what I, what is he talking about? What does he mean? What are we, are we fucking up? Are we just judging some like neurodivergent bro who's like figuring himself out? What, we're, he literally talks different in every video I've showed you. He talked different to FD. He's talking different here. He talked different in his, like he literally, that's what I'm saying. Like when he says like, I'm pretty much the same person in real life. Like, what does that mean? No disconnect. There's no, you're going to meet a different person if you meet me in real life. And I think that's a big issue with people online where they put on a character for so long they don't know the difference between two separate people. And it's, it's weird. It's weird. Okay, right? There comes a point in your life. So this is called, this is one month ago, overcoming my narcissism. This, this comment says, this is the most honest video I've ever watched in my life. As far as narcissism and God complex is concerned, I respect that. Yeah, I don't know about that. Obviously, he's dubbing himself a narcissist because uh, I doubt he has actual NPD. And if he did, he probably wouldn't come out with it like this he's probably trying to be like i'm a narcissist and a sociopath i'm edgy look at me myspace 2003 you know okay <laughs> there comes a point in your life when you get older and you value connections more than you value yourself and i didn't realize that and i don't think i have that many connections left i don't know my best friend's birthday nor do i know where he works at i don't know my father's birthday either and i really don't know how he's doing mentally i don't <laughs> Chat, how is he lecturing about being fake when he is clearly cosplaying as Dave Chappelle? Yo, someone called the fire department because it is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know where my personal friends, where their agency lies. I don't know where their allegiances are. And I can only tell you that... You know, you just call up your best friend and ask when's your birthday. I fixed it for you. Weaknesses, generally. I don't know many of their strengths. A lot of my friends are former addicts or currently addicts or alcoholics and things that. Oh, so he so all his friends were drug addicts around him. He was in a gang, but he's straight edge. He's never done anything. Or is he saying I used to do stuff, but I don't do stuff now. But no, because we went on his TikTok and his recent drama with somebody saying I knew this guy in the past and he was a shit person who drank and did drugs. And now he's saying I never did that. I'm straight edge. He is lying. Whatever is going on in this man's life. It, it, I think we, it is like the Truman Show, only we're Truman. Only he knows what's really going on, but I don't know what it is. I literally think, like, I don't know what it is. A variety. A large part of my life contingent on the fact that I was the pillar and beacon of strength for a lot of people. And I held on to that power because that power made me feel great. It made me feel like I was a person. It made me feel like somebody that mattered to them. I am a narcissist. I am genuinely a narcissist. And I don't mean this in a way for people to feel empathetic because I promise you. See, like, what does that mean? I can't take you seriously. Are you diagnosed NPD or you're just saying you're high in your ego? Cool. You and Trump should make love because you're both the same. Like, what, is, what does he mean when he says, I am genuinely a narcissist? Do you mean you genuinely have a personality disorder? Or what do you, I need the details. I do not share that same empathy for you. I have a very low threshold when it comes to caring i do not care as deep or as intimately as others in a large part of my life i would witness others be naturally good and i asked myself a question that i had heard one time what is better to be born good or through extreme effort to combat a great evil inside you for a large part of my life oh my god shut up bro literally ugh anyways this is very narcissistic of him i guess uh, was it hard to talk to Mr. Girl because of this? Because you didn't know what was real or not? No. Mr. Girl obviously has a value system. It's very weird. But he, Mr. Girl was confusing because I did, I just read him wrong when we talked. Like, I just didn't understand what category of person he is. And I don't get where he gets all his weird um, beliefs from. Like, he doesn't fit into any of the bubbles I ever grew up in. Mr. Girl doesn't come from a background that makes sense. Even when he's like... Talking about his, like, ethnic background. I don't know anybody like him. So, like, he doesn't fit into a bubble. But then he thinks he's, like, helping the world. Like, Mr. Girl's just weird. But Mr. Girl has something in his brain that tells him, like, this is what things mean. 
it's different. Like Mr. Girl would never say this. Mr. Girl wants to save the world. This guy is saying, I'm a psychopath. I don't care about you, which is very different. But I think it's like both of them just feel like, be serious, please. You're both being so silly right now. You're being so silly. Please be serious and talk to me like a person. I feel like there's a groundedness to people that people on the internet in some spaces aren't being. Like, could you please just talk to me like a person? How do you go? How do you buy your groceries? How do you interact with people? I feel like these people cannot possibly know how to adult. Like, how do you even get through a, a, an appointment at the DMV? It just feels like they're so weird, you know? <sighs> but obviously he's super traumatized. And the fact that he doesn't see himself as a victim, even though he obviously is one, is also part of the problem. But also I think that could be his fake persona or also a reaction to it. Like a reaction to the trauma is this. This is what happens when you traumatize your kids. They don't know who they are, right? Discord says, I think this is the problem when you're traumatized and refuse to realize you're the victim. This is possibly someone traumatized during their youth and is now processing, sensationalizing, and monetizing as an adult and a teenager in stunted way. I agree. 100%. This is what happens when you traumatize your children. Congratulations. They have no foundation. But I thought to myself, if I'm evil or do evil, then I am an evil person. That's not true. If you are evil, then you must do better. You don't just stay contingent on the fact that you are evil. You must be better than what you are. I need to be better. Be better than what you are by cleaning up your apartment. It's a mess. I see all this shit on the floor behind you. I don't know what that's about, but you should probably clean your house. But he's probably neurodivergent and probably struggles to do chores. Better. And I must overcome my narcissistic traits. And to do that, I must tell the evils that I've committed. Block this person. You're clearly wanting to hate on a black man. Block this person. If I wanted to hate on a black man, I'd call Myron. Oh, wait. He might be too white for that, actually. Maybe that's what it is. In my life, I've been horribly manipulated. I feel sorry if you were being sarcastic, but it sounded like you were serious. And then I wanted to make a joke about Myron being white. Thank you for liking the stream, guys. <laughs> Whenever I notice a slight change in a facial expression, being highly observant with a person, I would instantly and almost characteristically and charismatically use my charisma and charm and wit in order to garner them to my side when I noticed that they were distasteful of my opinion, garnering and shaping my entire opinion around what they believed in simply to gain their favor. I did this for a large part of my life up until I was about 24, 27 now. For the past three years, I have not. I have not done that. All I would do, in essence, is allow myself to be centerfold and center forward in people's lives so they would holistically rely on me. I never befriended somebody that I felt was powerful. I could tell almost instantly if they were powerful. I could tell. I could see their aura, their strength. I could see their characteristics. I never. Ugh, he's giving me a pinch in my head. I've got a. I'm getting a wee bit of a headache listening to him talk. You know what? To be honest, he's definitely self centered. He's definitely coping because of his trauma. He was traumatized as a child. I mean, to have sex at eight years old, if that's true, is just horrible, right? To have parents who put push pornography onto you is just horrible. If he really wasn't a gang, that's horrible. If he really was homeless, that's horrible. Like ultimately his life sounds horrible and traumatic. You need therapy. You know what I mean? But like he says he's gone to therapy and he's working on it. But also there's something about him that's so inauthentic, but I'm not sure. You know what he is? He's a little spider web of a mess and he needs to slowly pull his like little strands of the web apart to figure out where the core of him is. I don't know who the core of this man is, but either does he. So he can't tell us because he doesn't know, right? So when I see him, I'm like, okay, there's something here that's just strange. And that's not his fault. Like, this is the consequence of traumatizing your children. They go through an experience, right? And so without judging him in that real way, like, we're never judging on this channel. We're only judging in a gay way. We're never condemning people. It's not our job. Right? Like, I'm not condemning him to a life of misery. I want him to be happy. But it's also, it stands out to me when a content creator like this comes across my feed. You guys suggested I watch him. And I had seen him on TikTok, TikTok before and didn't like him. But this is the kind of person to me that is probably going to chase fame. He's probably looking for clout, like he said. He is bitter and angry. And he sort of 
tells his story in a way that makes him feel better about himself, probably because of his childhood trauma. But so like there's a place to feel bad for him. And there's also a place to just not my not my business. Uh, my arc is sailing and you're you're not going to be on it. You know, with peace and love. So it is one of those things. Um, if you're a narcissist, can you have core values? I don't know. Dr. Kirkonda, who specializes in personality disorders, said that his NPD clients, NPD is usually a personality disorder that stems from severe childhood trauma, um, a feeling of real um, neglect and a lack of foundation and a strong abandonment from your parents so or your upbringing. So to be fair, I, I think if you worked on it, maybe you could start to form those things. But right now, from what we understand, from what Dr. Kirkonda said about the the data, is that narcissistic, narcissistic like personality disorder p patients, they they do have a deep, sad sort of like struggle of an existence because they don't know themselves. Um, it's really difficult. You know, they're relying a lot on keeping themselves safe, which often does sort of appear or end up turning into sort of taking advantage of people in order to quote maintain safety from your childhood which is really sad it's like really kind of it's just devastatingly sad anyways um i just feel like this is fake like this is for views right overcoming my narcissism you know some 15 year old emo girl was like oh my god he's so real you know um i don't know this guy in the comment section says seems like he's reading this um, and then he said, I'm not reading anything. People are like, yeah, but people like script things all the time. It's like interesting. He just has this like story he's telling himself where he's like, I'm the villain, but I'm also the hero. I, he wants the story. Okay. I was thinking about this with Julia Fox's memoir as I'm going through it. And I talked to my partner about this too, where you know, as a parent, you want to give your child a better life than you had, technically. But more than that, a child will grow up feeling like they don't have a good enough story to sort of be cool. So they sort of look for something traumatizing. But also, um, my partner and I were talking about the kinds of famous people that exist. Like if you don't have a talent or an art form, you're you're famous for having a shitty life. Like Ultimately, Julia Fox's story so far is that my life was so shitty, fame was the only thing that made me interesting. So she became famous because she was fucked up. Trisha Paytas, Tana Mojo, they didn't become famous because of their talents. They became famous because they were fucked up. And then they, because they were fucked up, could spend that money on what they were like into, like hobbies, like Trisha does music videos. But Trisha always talks about how like, that wasn't what made her money. She produced all of those music videos and always lost money because like she didn't make money from those things. She made money from her chicken nugget antics on the kitchen floor crying. So there's just things that people are willing to do because they grew up fucked up that like usually well-adjusted people aren't willing to do as much because they grew up not as fucked up. So the question is, how fucked up did he grow up? And if any of this is true, then it makes sense for everything he went. Remember how Mr. Girl had stories about how his mom wanted to sleep with him and how his dad asked him, like, um, asked his friend to, like, he asked his dad, why don't you want to see my penis or whatever? Do you remember those stories? And I remember thinking, oh, my God, Mr. Girl was so fucked up from his childhood. No wonder he's, like, an artist who's, like, suffering. And then you just realize he's an asshole. I don't care how much you've suffered at that point. You're just a fucking asshole. Right? Like you suffering doesn't, it's not an excuse for you for you being an asshole. And he was. And same with this guy. Like at some point your childhood is sad. And at some point you're just an adult who's an asshole. And either way, it's kind of sad, but it's not my business because I don't need to do emotional labor for these men. I never wanted to be upstaged. Not once that I want to be upstaged. I just want it to be the main centerfold. I wanted my grandiose nature to be on full display for everybody to know, and that's what I craved. I wanted everybody to look at me and think, wow, he's got it all together. He's got a down pat. And that is all I ever wanted from people to look at me and think he's perfect. And I didn't view other people as if they even could be close to me. I had a horrifying God complex, a God complex. 
Yes. Oh, my God. This Wait, where is it? This motherfucker says words and doesn't know what they mean. Yeah, it feels like he's just gibberishing. He feels like I'm reading a memoir of a narcissist, to be fair, who's like really into themselves. And I think everything they say is profound. Yeah. Yeah, he might be a narcissist. He might be NPD. You know what I mean? He might be. He definitely sounds like he could be. He might be. That might explain all of it. But I also wondered if Max was a narcissist. Complex. Yeah, it's like faux enlightenment. Exactly. Exactly. That extended to the point where I didn't even view other people as people. They were tools to be manipulated. And if you were to ever ask me why I did it. See, but Max, Max has a weird sense of justice. Like, Max has a really weird sense of justice, which is why he's annoying. Because, like, his sense of justice doesn't – sort. it kind of makes sense almost, but it doesn't. That's why Max was so frustrating because, like, you said you cared about people, but then you were cruel to people. So, like, in a way that was so unnecessary. I didn't get it. Right? Hmm. Discord said he really thinks he's the mastermind when interacting with people, but I'm guessing like we're not buying it now. I doubt many people bought that into that image when he was trying to protect or the image that he was trying to protect. It's a big cope that he doesn't have to feel compassion for himself. I think a bunch of losers who are very unhealthy thought he was charismatic for 10.5 seconds. <laughs> Max is autism versus this guy's ADHD. True. True. I bet this guy in his 20s probably did attract a lot of like unhealthy people and they all had a story together. Like even in Julia Fox's story, you had to have a crowd of people who made all those stories true and it was all bad. It was all bad. You know, it was horrible. All those people participating were deeply unhealthy people in and out of jail, drugs, addiction, homelessness, theft. I mean, Julia Fox was a thief. She was a minor sex worker. She, you know, she was stealing people's IDs and wallets and, you know, just she wasn't a good person, right? Like, I know you grew up traumatized, but like you also weren't, she wasn't like a good person, right? She's a product of her environment. Yes, I get that. But uh, it was rough, you know? So I hope she's better now, but I don't know. She recently dated Kanye. So, I mean, and now she's a lesbian, which I love, but also, I don't know. I don't know how much trauma she still has now in order to maintain that status and fame, you know? Um, let's see. Discord says, yeah, but Mr. Girl spoke the same way to everyone. Uh-huh. Oh, mm. Ciro spoke so differently to FD. He seems like he really doesn't need a father. He does need a father figure. He definitely needs a lot. Yeah, see? Who's this guy? Who's this guy compared to the guy that was talking to FD? See how different the two personalities are? But maybe he's ADHD, so he has, like, all of these facets of himself. Or maybe he's just multifaceted and he's showing the different versions of himself on screen. Hmm. Maybe. It's because I could. There was no greater reasoning behind that. There was nothing that inspired me gaining some higher purpose, some higher power, some grandiose plan, some high scheme that I was plotting out. Yo, Amaranth sniffed this man through the Discord call. That's why he was so mad at her. The way, yeah, the way he lashed out at her. Yo, she sniffed him a mile away. Literally. Called him out. And he was like, what the fuck? And I was like, oh, this makes so much sense why right away she was like, nah, I know this type. I know this type of dude, bro. And she's probably right. It wasn't calculated. It was just opportunistic. I could. I would use spouts of manipulation. I would use spouts of grandioseness. I would use every asset and tool that I had garnered throughout my entire life to get to the next stepping stone. If I saw somebody. This guy sounds like he's going on quests every time he speaks. That's the neurodivergence that I'm sensing. That was in a very low point in state that had misery. I would keep them close. I would coddle them. I would make sure I could be around that because I wanted to learn about them and learn their weaknesses. Okay, slow down there, buddy. Discord said, yeah, he just seems stunted. Nothing profound. That's true. That's what it is. This is just an unhealthy person. And that's why I recommend you get healthy. Your life will be better. Life can be so much better than this. Are we done with him? Do we want to move on to something else? Or do you guys want to finish this one video? Let me know. Because I know those are the people that will do the most for you. The people that are the most miserable. The people that need the most help and support. The people that need you. And everybody around me thought I was some hero. Wow, you're befriending addicts. Wow, that guy has a horrible drug problem. Wow, he's an alcoholic. And everybody thought to themselves, wow, 
He's so nice befriending people that have no friends. No, that was not the true intention. And I would never hide my intentions. I was never tricky in that capacity. My All right, buddy. You guys, we're done. <laughs> move on. I'm good. I've seen enough. <laughs> Please move on. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay, so I think I proved my point that I initially saw his content on TikTok, didn't like it. I got bad vibes. Saw him with FD Signifier, was confused on why FD was talking to him. Got confused by his persona in there. Got confused at the Amaran thing today. And then here's our conclusion. He will remain unwatched on TikTok. I might have already blocked him, honestly. I haven't seen him on my feed in a really long time. I block a lot of people on TikTok. If I don't want to see you, I don't want to see you. Uh, sometimes it's not personal, though. With him, definitely uninteresting. But also, I have a feeling he's going to come up. I have a feeling he is going to probably blow up on YouTube. He'll probably have a good enough audience. And he'll probably be in the uh, in the sphere. So he has 35,000 subscribers now, but he's already showing up on my like recommended and stuff. So I think he's just going to be another voice in the sphere. I wish we were a little bit healthier on this side of YouTube, but uh, you know, that's why you got to stick to yourself sometimes, I guess. I don't know. Oh my God. Okay, let's move on. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Done.